Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Game Former Show. I'm Ben Hansen, joined by Ben Reeves. Hey, glad to be here. Oh, wow. And Jeffrey Cork. I'm gladder to be here. Wow, oh, look at that. Uh, Leo's in the booth, technically, as well. Oh, hey, man. Hey, welcome. Um, we are still here, <laughs> and we're talking about some games. Uh, Reeves, you have played The Last of Us Part Two. I have. Let With me see your hands. hands. Those hands right these there. These hands right here. That's very interesting. They've we'll touched. learn all about it. Um, no spoilers, though, right? Oh, no. Okay. I'm Great. not going to talk about it. <laughs> oh, cool. Um, and then, let's see. We're going to get Reiner and Dan Tacken here to talk about these souls likes. Uh, we got Code Vein and Surge 2 out and about. Mm hmm. Doing their things. <laughs> Whatever they living just, their lives. Just living, as some yeah. people say. Uh, and then we have community emails. And then back half of the show, we're going to talk about uh, Apple Arcade. We've been dabbling a little bit, and we're going to weigh in with our thoughts on the service so far, because it's, it's an oddity. The phone games, I know, you know, the hardcore gamers watching and listening might be like, all right, but it's an interesting development in the industry we should talk a little how? bit about. How? Let's explain how <laughs> later on. Um, let's see. Uh, state of things. Uh, next week is going to be exciting, because we're revealing our cover story on Tuesday, which I believe is October 1st. I know what it is. Oh, you do? Mm -hmm. You've seen a lot of video content about that. Uh... Also, uh, by the way, uh, Brian Shea wrote that cover story for yeah. a, a subtle hint. Uh, also, uh, <laughs> there's a big feature on another mysterious game, uh, Ben Reeves, that you wrote. Yeah. And we, we talk about it. Yeah, we recorded two rapid fire interviews, so we'll be airing maybe both of those next week. And we haven't exactly figured out when the second feature focused rapid fire is going to happen. But uh, next week should be exciting for both the website, gameformer.com, and for the podcast because we'll unpack everything we learned about these interesting games. I'll phrase it. How would you phrase them, Reeves? I think they're interesting stories. At least the one I wrote is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's figure it out. Uh, okay, Last of Us Part Two. Let's dive into this sucker. Uh, ben Reeves, what have you seen? What do you know? What have you played? I played about two hours. I had two different demos. I got the impression the first one's like very near the beginning of the game, but not right at the beginning. Mm, and then okay. like I have another section, like an hour or so. I played this very like combat heavy. Okay, so we've seen uh, the latest trailer that was revealed during State of Play. In that, it kind of shows a snowy area with Ellie and her, what I presume is her girlfriend. Uh -huh. um, then uh, uh, the trailer doesn't spoil things. It's very subtle. But Ellie sees something, screams no, and then seems to be sad afterwards. And Goes then into of, a rage. Right. And you hear a of, gunshot. Right. Hey, look, I don't want to say what happens. I don't. Don't put two and two together. <laughs> but uh, then she's like wandering the world a little bit. And then uh -huh. in the trailer, runs into Joel. Uh, so you've kind of played those two slices then? That's the idea? Yeah, I played... So like the stuff with the horse uh, that you saw in the trailer, I played through a sequence that included that, and then I played a sequence that ended with where the trailer ended with Joel. Okay, and did you have any sense of how far into the game that Joel section was? Uh, they didn't say exactly. I mean, I think it's still early enough. It's like in the first half, if I had to guess. Okay, sure. Because it seems like the plot is still, you know, progressing towards like... Ellie getting revenge for this mysterious thing that happens. Right. Which, by the way, I mean, we should just be upfront about this at this point. Like, it's interesting, because I think it even at E3, was it last year? Maybe? But I remember reading interviews with Neil Druckmann and, and Haley Gross, uh, who's also a writer over there, and somebody asked them about, like, oh, it seems like Ellie has a girlfriend. What do you think about, like, the concept of fridging overall in mm -hmm. fiction? And they're like, well, like, oh, just very much like, well, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But I remember reading that and being like, okay, this girlfriend is clearly going to die, and that's going to be the catalyst to kind of propel Ellie to want right. to get revenge against this group, which then in the trailer is also interesting. Tommy comes back uh, uh -huh. and also is addressing, like, hey, this group might be more dangerous than you realize, Ellie. Be careful out there. Yeah. Yeah, it is interesting. To, the first part of what you said is, like, it seems like her, I mean, they, they don't really refer to her as a girlfriend or anything. It seems like it's a romantic interest that's, like, building towards something. Right. And Ellie's definitely very interested. Yeah. Uh, but it it does seem like she dies, and that's what sends Ellie off on this, like, spiral yeah. of rage. But I don't know why they're being secretive about it. It makes me think, like, okay, well, are well, they? At the, I mean, they don't show a bullet going through her head. But I mean, if you watch that trailer, it seems very clear what's happening here. Well, but when you ask them about, like, is this what happens? They're like cagey about it. Oh, is that so? Right? It makes me wonder, like, is there more to it than that? I don't know. So maybe, maybe there's more to it. I kind of hope there's more to it because yeah. it seems like okay, it's a revenge story. Right. Maybe. Which yeah. isn't, you know, could be a good revenge story. Yeah, that's true. Um, okay, just overall impressions. Uh, you played the game. Uh, how is it? It's. Good. <laughs> Lo and yeah, behold. Naughty Dog, they're like, uh, we're going to make a good game. Ah, the comeback like, story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Finally, people have been dogging us for years, uh -huh. but we're out of our shell now. Yeah, uh, underdog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It's, uh, I don't know what I expected going in. Uh, then I started playing. I'm like, oh, this is more Last of Us. Uh, <laughs> and 
Uh, maybe it's just because they've been quiet for so long, whereas, like, I thought it'd be this big, like, reveal, and it's like, oh, it's crazy how different it is or something, but, and I don't mean this in a bad way. Right. It's, it's more Last of Us, mm -hmm. and that's a really, really good thing, because Last of Us was, like, one of the top three games of last generation, right? Of course. And I have a question. Yeah. So just set up the demo for us, like, in broad terms. Were all the elements in place, like, was crafting in this build, were trophies unlocking as you, was play as you were playing, or, like... What was uh, your experience? Like? I didn't see trophies, but oh, yeah, there was playing poorly. Yeah, ooh, boy, <laughs> yeah, I just failed constantly. <laughs> They're like, usually people are able to finish this in an hour. Yeah, we've but... had people platinum this yeah. demo. Yeah. What was weird though is during the reveal trailer, during that gunshot, they actually had a trophy pop up, and it's like, too bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. bummer. Love lost. Yeah, <laughs> that's smelly for Ellie. <laughs> just like my prom night. So, Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> Go on Question? with your crafting explanation. There is crafting okay. in the game, and so I got to like do some crafting. Is it functionally identical to what it was in the Last of Us? It's very similar. So I did. I was able to craft uh, one new thing, which is like this uh, landmine type bomb that you can plant mm -hmm. in the ground, and then people will come and like step on it. It sounds like up. a landmine. Yeah. yeah, it's a landmine. <laughs> turns out, but they a lot of this. Elements from the first game are still there, so you can like you have the materials where you can craft a health pack, or mm -hmm. you can craft a uh, Motov cocktail. Okay, and like the same materials for both of those, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Just it's like, like Days Gone is what you're trying to tell me. <laughs> Just like they were very inspired by Days Gone. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have a question, Reeves. Over yes. here, over here. Yes, yes, yes. Um, In the back. Visually, were your socks knocked mm. clean off, or was it like where they're kind of riding down and it's uncomfortable where your socks are? Uh, I'm not wearing socks today. Okay. I'll just say that. Uh -huh. It did look really good, especially the opening scene, which starts with the horse stuff. Right. And I'm like, this is a really good looking horse. And I just saw a really good looking horse last year with Red Dead, and I'm trying uh -huh. to compare it to that. And I'm like, do I think this looks better than Red Dead? Which is a hard comparison, but I think maybe I do think it's better. Like, no, the horse looked really good. Yeah. And, like, you're walking through this uh, this winter wonderland, let's say, and it, the snow looks great, and there's a storm you get caught up in. Mm. It's a really good looking game. Huh. Um... I'm really intrigued by the fact that they said that wasn't the very start of the game. I hope they do some little vignette again. I, like they have the, to. the opening for The Last of Us is one of my favorite openings of all time, and it's silly not to go for something. I don't know mm -hmm. what it could possibly be. Yeah. Like some sort of flashback, maybe even to like timeline of The Last of Us oh. one. What if it's a flash forward though? Like you see like the end of this game. And then you flash back and play through the game. That'd be interesting. <laughs> the, the alert comes on the screen. You're not allowed to capture gameplay during this section. Spoilers contained within. Maybe we'll see that dance sequence we saw in that earlier trailer. It could be. Well, yeah. So the, the section I played, which felt tutorial heavy, so they were explaining how the game works. Okay. And maybe they like set that up just for this demo. Right. But they are talking and referencing things. The kiss, basically, that mm -hmm. happened in yeah. that E3 yeah. Trailer. So that mm -hmm. happens before the section I played. Right, right. So apparently there's at least that stuff that happens before what I played. Okay, right on. Uh, other big standout impressions? Other than, hey, it feels like a really great version of Last of Us? Uh, it's a really great version of Last of Us. <laughs> they, they added new enemies. So yeah. there's like a new... Uh, it's not called a clicker, but it's a new, you know, infected enemy mm -hmm. that's very... It kind of looks like the bloater characters, yeah. like big and bloated. Yeah. And they like run up to you and explode with this acid mixture in the air. And so then it like lingers in the air and there's this cloud of acid that mm. hurts you if you stay in it. And this is in the snow area or in the greener area later? Uh, this was later in the greener area. Okay. So yeah, the, it starts off in Jacksonville, Wyoming, and that's where the snowy area is. Uh -huh. And then she, the bad thing happens that sets Ellie off and she travels out to Seattle mm. to hunt down the people that did the bad thing. Right. And that was the second section I played was in the Seattle area. Okay, and that was a little bit more traditional with the original Last of Us, just kind of scavenging, going from car to car. The environment looks pretty similar to what we'd expect from some of the city areas in the Last yeah, of Us 1. Yeah, yeah. It's very similar. It was a very long section of like me being hunted by enemies, human enemies this time, and the humans now have dogs with them, and so they'll uh, the dogs will like sniff you out, and if you go into your, uh, what do you call it, the sensing position, you know, where you hold and listen to things... Mm -hmm you can see the dogs following you and following your scent. So mm. you can like see, oh, this is where my scent was. And the dog is like slowly catching up to me. Oh, interesting. So you kind of got to constantly be on the move and from have, these guys. You got to stab a lot of dogs in this game? I did stab a few dogs. Ooh. I also got a bow and arrow during that section. So I took out the guy who was with the dog and like the guy fell over and I'm like, good, I got that guy. Mm -hmm. And then the dog's like, oh, oh, oh. 
and like pawn at the guy, like his oh, master. No. And I'm like, no, now I feel like a monster. <laughs> Do you think Ellie felt like a monster, or is Ellie just a, a cold, hard monster at this point herself? She's no cold hard. Do you have any sense of like where she's at? Do you think she cares? This is a oh question, no, not but. at all. And in fact, like there's when she goes to like do a stealth kill, there's a couple times where the camera pans around and you really see her face, and it's just it's like filled with rage and anger. Yeah, and like it's somewhat chilling. You're like, who? What am I playing? And I think they they're doing that intentionally. They're kind of like, you know, the first game they say it was about a, a parent child relationship and kind mm-hmm. of like exploring love. This is what Neil Druckmann said. Mm-hmm. And then with this game, they want to explore rage and how that can maybe be similar to love. So I'm not quite sure exactly how that'll play out in the game, but... Hmm. Well, I think we all understand that. <laughs> yeah, I think we all get it. Uh, it's interesting, though. You like, are raging over your kids, right, Cork? Constantly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, it's interesting, you know, to think of if Ellie is starting in a place of pure rage where she has room to grow. Mm-hmm. And so it seems like, uh, not obviously, but like the natural progression would be by the end of the game, she's in... A acceptance much more, yeah or a peaceful state mm-hmm. i'd be curious to see how they how they evolve that how joel has an impact on her rage overall like so joel did the demo cut like right where the trailer cuts basically yeah that's basically the end of the demo where joel just says uh you think i'd let you do this on your own mm-hmm. right so he's back hey, everybody yeah or is he <laughs> cork you're saying that the internet still believes that he there's some be a people ghost. that still believe he might be a ghost hmm. oh that's interesting. was he a ghost in the build you played uh, he looked kind of like Obi Wan Kenobi right, in right. Empire Strikes Back. So. A little Slimer esque. I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very much like Slimer. Eating hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. You've probably talked about this uh, a bunch, so I apologize if this is already ground that you've covered. But they didn't do us any favors with the name of this game because now, if you refer to the previous one, you have to call it the Last Last of Us or the First mm-hmm. Last of Us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Neither one is optimal. I don't like the T Lu thing. Everybody says you. that. All oh, the abbreviations. People say that out people loud? People say that. So people in Sony say that. Oh. No. Oh, that's oh, gross. I know. Yuck. I agree. <laughs> so the theory is that maybe Joel's the one who dies at the beginning of the game, mm-hmm. and that's why she's angry? Is that, oh. Is that oh, I didn't even connect the, to that. That's the theory, yes. Okay. Yeah. That'd be interesting. I don't... So the weird part is, like, I don't understand what their relationship is at this point. Like, yeah. are they, does, how, how does Ellie feel about Joel? Right. Does she care for him in the same way or the same level? Because I feel like she's a little aloof. At the end of the first game, she kind of knows what happened. Not without, she without knows, saying any spoilers. Like, right. I get the sense that she kind of knows and maybe that's going to affect how she sees him, right? Right. So right. I don't know if she would, I mean, she might be upset if mm-hmm. he got killed. I don't know if she would go into a huge rage. Mm-hmm. Over that, I'm sure. I mean, in terms of like the people she's connected to in this world, I mean, who knows what she's been up to since the end of the first game? But he's still got to be top of that list, right? Yeah. Even if he is, you know, nebulous. Yeah. So what I think they're setting up is Ellie is going to have everything taken from her. Like she grew up in this world that was crumbling, and so I don't think she had expectations to like have much of a life. Yeah. And now she's has that life, and she has opportunity to even have a romantic relationship and have things that that she hasn't had before yeah and then what i think they're going to do is take that away from her Uh and then she's going to be like oh well now i'm pissed off right uh more important question uh the trailer opens is uh his uh her her love interest is it gina is that her name i think it's dina dina Dina, i'm sorry um she's smoking a joint there is that what's going on there oh yeah that's part of the like the sequence i played actually is they find the stash of weed and smoke some weed and it's actually a pretty cute scene. Like, there's there's a lot of, like, dialogue-heavy stuff in the beginning of the game with, like, yeah. her interacting with Dina, and you're like, okay, I'm actually really growing to like these characters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And especially Dina herself. And so it's like, oh, well, if she does die, I'm going to be kind of sad. Yeah. Uh, so you got to do some interviews with Naughty Dog folks? Yeah, I talked to Kurt, who's, like, one of the co-directors. co-directors. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was the co-director of... Lost Legacy as well. We interviewed him a fair amount of that cover story. And he yeah. goes back a ways. I tried to... Two, I think. He kind of was a big set piece design guy. Like, yeah, he was on two and three. Yeah. And he, I think he worked on Last of Us a little bit. Yeah, first he did, one. for sure. Uh, so I'm like, wow, you've been around a long time. And I didn't realize how long you've and been around. And he said, yeah. He's yeah, like, yeah. put his hands behind his head. He's like, yeah. <laughs> so uh, did you learn more. anything from him? Uh, what did I learn? He just kind of like, nothing like super profound. I actually asked him about the end of the first game. And people... What, what people feel about Joel at the end of the game uh-huh. based on his actions. Mm-hmm. And some people like see him as a bad guy. And I was like, well, is that your guys' intention? You, did you want to paint him as like a villain or something? And he was like, no, it's just about like exploring 
that relationship and what he, he lost everything at yeah. the beginning of the game. And then like, what would you do if you had this choice? And right. like, it was more exploring that. And I was like, well, eh, I agree. I, I, I don't see Joel as a bad guy in the same sense that a lot of people do. He did yeah. a selfish thing. Sure. Let's say <laughs> we're dancing around it. A little bit <laughs> dancing into it. Um, did you get any sense of the game's development? Did you learn anything about just the overall development? Uh, I, I saw online that according to a pre-order, it looks like it's going to be shipped on two discs. Um, did you talk to Kurt at all just about the challenges of developing this game? Yeah, they said it was... I only had 20 minutes with him, so I didn't sure. get to like, dive in as quite as hard as I would have liked. But he sa- they said it's um, the biggest game they've ever made yeah. like out of any game, and also like length-wise and just like ambition. So I'm like, oh, that's interesting, because it feels like kind of the the template was established in the first game. And so you're kind of following that template. And he's like, yeah, but you know, there's still a lot of like things you got to adjust and figure out like shivs, for example, mm-hmm. which is a thing in the first game. And they had to debate like, do we bring those back? Or is it a thing where like Ellie, we could sort of established in the first game. She has a knife mm-hmm. and she doesn't need shivs. Yeah. And so it's like, it feels like we're taking something away from players or, or something. So Ellie has this ability to stealth kill people with her knife. Mm. Uh, and so it's just like, oh, things like that, that you're like, oh, well, how does that work then? Does that change our game? Does that change our mechanics and our like crafting system? And it does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how do they like rejigger that? Hmm. Yeah. And going from like <clears throat> Last of Us to Uncharted 4 and then Uncharted 4 to Lost Legacy, it certainly seems like they're embracing more open areas, more player choice. Did, did that carry forward in the sections you played? Did it seem bigger, wider? Yeah. It doesn't feel like open world. Right. It's definitely like wide linear as mm-hmm. they put it yeah but it's very wide like the sec the second section that was all combat was very open and so and and they encourage you to re- like run away from combat in certain points like mm-hmm. if you like run in and like you get spotted and there's five guys after you it's probably better to just run at that point mm-hmm. and go hide and the stealth allows for that pretty well like i was able to run hide uh kind of gather my belongings mm-hmm. and then you know, take off people one by one mm-hmm. unless I got caught again, which right. is nice. Yeah. And the other thing they've changed is uh, there's tall grass now, so you can hike, hide in tall grass and you can go prone. But Pokemon will jump but out and attack Pokemon you. Pokemon will jump out and attack yeah. you. So, yeah, it's all about collecting and becoming the very best. Okay. There Did you get a sense that your horse is going to be a like a long-term presence in the game, like in that second more combat-oriented section? Did you, like, hitch your horse somewhere and say, like, I'll be back in a second, it's dangerous, or... Was that horse just kind of isolated for that opening section? I think it might just be that first section. Okay. Or maybe it'll come up again, but it'll be isolated sections, because I didn't see the horse at all, that okay. second section. Or maybe Joel will just get on all fours and be like, climb aboard, Ellie! hey ho. That seems plausible. Yeah. Uh, what does it say about the tall grass, though? Is like you can hide in tall grass, but you're, you're only visible invisible from a certain distance like mm. they will eventually spot you. Oh, okay. It's That's not like nice. you're completely hidden. And if you right. throw a Molotov, can you burn the tall grass? Like, oh, that's it, a good question. Thank you. I didn't try that. Hmm. Hmm. That would have been I my failed you. I'm sorry. Obsession. Release date. It's February. True. Yep. 21st. Yep. Yeah. 2020. That's pretty quick. That's real good. That's surprisingly quick. Yeah. Well, but I mean, they've been heads down for a long time. Yeah. Like Uncharted 4 is three years ago, right? Oh, Four years ago? God. <laughs> I think it was 2016. Yeah. 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 Right? So, and they've been working on this exclusively. They've just been quiet for so long. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, God. Okay. I saw somebody online tweet about like, okay, February's a la- uh, Last of Us, uh, March is Final Fantasy, yep. and then and April Watch is uh, and Watch Dogs, mm-hmm. and then April is um, Cyberpunk. So, yeah, which I'm like, oh, that's a really good lineup. If nothing slips, if nothing, I slips. can see Cyberpunk. Slipping. I can see a Cyberpunk yeah. slipping too. But we'll um, it's interesting during the state of play, uh, which overall I thought was it was pretty good. Um, got a Watam release date, December 2019. I'm looking forward to that game. If you remember that interview with. Uh, Robin Haneke from Phenomena. Um, but it's interesting that like at the end of the Last of Us presentation, they say, our thanks to Naughty Dog for giving us this brand new look at The Last of Us Part Two. It's weird to hear like a Sony created thing be like, thank you, by the way, Naughty Dog. It's like, yeah, you own Naughty Dog. It's fine. Like you never How hear that, How would you that, phrase right? that? You gave us what we demanded. Well, no, you just don't phrase it at all. It's just weird like to treat it like it is a separate entity. Yeah. Yeah, it is interesting because they are owned, but I think Naughty Dog has a lot of pull. I think so. Because... 
Neil Druckmann was talking about, like, yeah, we're in this position where we can pretty much do whatever we want. Like, if we didn't want to do Last of Us, we could have said, like, Sony, we're going to do something else. Did you interview Neil, or when did you hear this? I was just hanging out with him. No, this was during, like, the opening presentation. Oh, did. okay. Because what was the idea? You're, like, sitting in a big warehouse, and Neil Druckmann is up on a decrepit bus giving a speech? <laughs> Dec- yeah. <laughs> Hang on. He's breaking. <laughs> Uh, this was at the beginning, there was a giant warehouse and they had it decorated. So there was like a Rustin's coffee, like facade yeah. and it had broken windows. And then they had like another area with like trees and it said last of us Two. So it was a cool little decorated warehouse. And then oh, yeah, okay. Neil Druckmann got up in front and talked to everybody. That's nice. Uh, Jeff Gork, you seem disgusted with Ben Reeves these days. It's just the coughing. I just, want, <laughs> I just hope he's better. Yeah. Also, uh, in that state of play, they announced, uh, that the last of us, one, the remaster is going to be the PS Plus game for October. Yeah. Um, so uh, several people were like, hey, we should do a game club on that. Absolutely. I would love to do it at some point before uh, Last of Us Part Two comes out. And we're announcing today that we'll do it in the future. Yay! Please look forward to it. Um, let's see, Cork, did you want to talk about that humanity game from State of Play? Uh, I, I don't really have much to say. <laughs> sure. Enhanced Games is... is uh, unclear not quite publishing it maybe but in a collaboration with enhanced games there's this other studio called tha that's making a game that looks uh bizarre it was based or inspired by like flocks of birds moving uh it's like little tiny people it looks like something that you would see projected onto a wall at an airport and if you yes. move your hand on it the people scatter yeah and it's weird like all the promotion for state of play they're using these images of like a mass of human beings rushing and running around. I just thought it was like, oh, that's custom graphics. That's interesting yeah. look for the state of play. It was like, oh, no, they're just taking video from the game, apparently. And then so, punching and shooting each other. Yeah. That was weird. Did you get a sense what the game is? is it like, Is it like an RTS? Are you controlling the armies? Or no. Or what is this? It's art. <laughs> okay, great. Um, yeah. Uh, Cork, speaking of art. Uh, yes, sir. You've uh, picked up and aggressively put down Contra Rogue Corps. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, it's not good. Okay. This it's is a, a, it's a real Contra bummer. Game. We did a new gameplay today on it, and you can see for yourself that sums um, it all up yeah it's a real bummer what bums you out uh it is not uh fun to play okay. and it uh is ugly and bad mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i want to thank you for more. doing that quirk because i was almost on that review and <laughs> i'm glad you jumped in front of the bullet for me yeah. yeah uh i heard that co-op doesn't unlock you have to play it for a significant amount of time for co-op to unlock and even then you are relegated to a, like a side mode you can't advance the campaign uh-huh. locally yeah cooperatively and your co-op partners don't keep any of their progress uh you can play online co-op technically i was never able to get a match going because no one else was playing no one else seemed to be on when i was is there any part of you that's still happy that game exists just as a sign of life from konami that the idea that like hey we technically tried to do something with our old ip you'd rather just they just stay quiet and worry about i would absolutely yeah yeah don't say anything unless you've got something nice to say yeah it's it's not going to sell well right so they're not going to get anything good out of it so it's not like oh encouragement for konami to keep making more things it feels like it's like burning the brand too you know Mm because contra people have such fond memories of it people of a certain age yeah and everyone else is just kind of like oh yeah i remember that there's some some really bad contra stuff right occasionally there are good ones again but like this is one that it just feels so clunky and archaic yeah Uh, it's like a twin stick shooter and if there are enemies that are like a different elevation than you you have to like jump up because your character can't raise or lower their gun and oh boy! And there are a fair amount of enemies that are higher and lower than you. Were it's you more just, bummed out or angry while playing the game? Uh, bummed out at first, and then I just got mad because okay. it just it just feels like it was uh, carelessly put together. Mm, that's a shame. Yeah. Ooh, shame, shame, shame. Uh, hey, do you guys want to clap out of here? Absolutely. Yeah. Let's, Let's clap go. Out of here. Andrew Reiner. Hello, Dan Tack. Why, hello there. Hello. Here we go. This is the Souls era. It, it is. Every game these days, Dan Tack, as much as you hate it will be compared to Dark Souls. In this case, we have a game <laughs> that we can't talk about without talking about Dark Souls. Okay, let's talk about it. This is Code Vein, which for years, I feel like we've been hearing about it for so long. We've talked about it several times on the podcast. There was a beta before. Yeah, it got um, delayed. It is, it is, as everyone says, anime Dark Souls. Yes, yes? That is clearly the blueprint they were operating from. Uh, <laughs> the whiteboard. To a, to a fault, actually. I mean, they've, they went way past, you know... <sighs> creative inspiration i uh-huh. mean some of the levels and bosses a dark souls fans will recognize immediately uh as as very inspired to put it how loosely. i mean we can 
we can spoil things. I don't want to go. T- people people do not like being. Okay, spoiled. but like areas, is it like okay? Here's exactly this area. There, from- there's a few areas that seem to be drawn directly from from Dark Souls blueprints. Yeah. Okay. And there's one boss that is unmistakably. Which boss is it inspired by? Uh, Ornstein and Smo. Uh, okay. That fight is basically in the game. Interesting. Um, do you like the game? And we should caveat that with a spoiler. I mean, people don't want to know that, right? Really? I think that it's inspired by a boss is totally yeah. fine. Okay. For Code Vein. Do I, I like the game? No. Like. Overall, no, I do not. It, okay. Um, we do have a score. Throw on this puppy if you want to get some context <sighs> kick, kicking right away. Or do Leo, you... are we ready for this puppy score? Hold on. Let me check. It's going to take about 20 minutes for me to check. Okay, great. Okay, well, we'll, we'll talk about We'll jump ahead minutes. in the edit. Ooh. Okay. Okay, we're good. We're looking at a 6.5. 6.5. Mm-hmm. Okay, is there anything worth talking about with this game then? So, yeah, there's, they do, you know, despite despite rigid adherence to its inspiration, it does do some things that the that this whole series does not. You've got a partner at all times. A companion. Whoa. AI companion, of course, you can A always, Robin. Mm. Yes, and you basically have to work with them if you want to do well, uh, you know. Take the heat off yourself. Let them take "quote unquote" aggro for a minute while you heal up and get ready to your attacks. So that that part of the game is actually interesting and plays pretty well. You can pick uh, companions that that complement you. Like if you're a heavy tanky dude, pick a range DPS guy sure. to back you up. Hell yeah! Um, another interesting thing that they did do is you're not locked into your stat build. So let's say if I build the whole game as a tank in Dark Souls, like it's going to be a huge. You know, I've got all this vitality, all these. You know, I don't want to change my whole build out in this. You just swap a archetype. They're called blood codes. So if I want to be a mage, I want to be an assassin, and there's there's tons of these things. Like I think I don't know a lot, like probably twenty, maybe more. Hmm. There's a lot of them, and they all have different abilities and passives, active and passive, and you can mix and match these on the fly. So if you want to make your tank caster or whatever you want, you just flip a few skills around, and boom, you're ready to go. Like without having to destat and restat. So there's interesting systems at play. It's just yeah. what how. Copy and paste it is that drives you nuts, so or what sucks? The, the copy and paste, you know, that's one thing. Sure, that's that's not going to get it the score that it did. It's yeah. the stuff that the stuff that you know the bosses are super like. I mean, I was just going through making creative names for them, like Nightman, Wolf Guy. They're very generic, very boring. The Nightman cometh. Mm. Yeah, they're they're super boring. Like <gasps> you kill a boss, and like five seconds later, you don't even remember what it was. You're just through the next area. It's very, okay. it's very like. Point boss, point boss, point boss. Sure. Oh, we're doing Dark Souls interesting things with level loops, arounds, and shortcuts. Oh, yeah. No, not really. It's so... Very, very repetitive okay. enemies. Like, the bosses, pretty, a lot of them do the same exact moves. Like, I have a move where I'm going to get mad and, and put a bunch of fire around me, and it's going to hurt you. So move away when you see me do this. And multiple like, do that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah multiple wait. bosses. It's just, it just gets very stale, very repetitive. The combat lacks a lot of weight. Even when you're like staggering bosses, it's just like, what, am I actually you know doing anything here? I'm just punching them, just like chopping into a big block of meat with yeah, a hammer. It's yeah. just like, oh. ah, all right. It's weird for Namco to have Dark Souls, but maybe it's like, okay, with Elden Ring coming around, maybe yeah. From Software is looking to shake things up a little bit more. So what do we have in that Dark Souls slot? Hey, Code Vein, who's developing it? Bandai. Oh, Namco. so it's internal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, the thing is like, and there, there are stuff to like too. Like the, the, I liked the anime style and aesthetic. If you played God Eater, you're going to see a lot of the same like cool, metal-y things like yeah. gas masks and bayonets and all kinds of like stuff like that. Very anime style. So you, if if you like anime, you'll get a couple more points in that realm. But <laughs> sure. just the just the gameplay, the stages, the bosses. These are critical right. elements of a Souls game. They all they all just don't get there. <laughs> That's Code Vein. You need That's to be desperate vein. for a new Souls game. But maybe you should look towards Surge 2, Reiner? Yes, you should. Okay, what is Surge 2 all about? That was brutal, Dan Tack. I don't want to play that game. Um, well, yeah, 6.5. That's not exactly a stirring endorsement. No, that's a, a D in my book. Interesting. Uh, the Surge 2 is a, I guess, direct continuation of the Surge 1. I don't Which know how many of you out there played it it was sci-fi dark souls right <laughs> yeah i guess that's what we build okay. these things right it wasn't something about like getting parts from a scrap heap or something yeah it's got a junkyard mentality but your junkyard is your rival opponents so you'll see them they're wearing gear and you'll be like "Ooh, i like that uh arm brace he's wearing i'm gonna take it and to do that you weaken them by using r1 and r2 to, for combat light and heavy attacks and then uh you chop off that limb and take the item from the severed limb. Okay. Or head if they're wearing a helmet. Sounds fun. So that's how you get the blueprints to craft these things. You need a currency, which you get from downing enemies and getting things that you can pop and get instantaneous 
bolts or whatever they call them in this sure. scrap uh-huh. uh, to be able to build these things and then level them up. That is the core loop of this of the surge too, and I think uh, they did a really nice job in this one in making it every new environment you enter, the time you spend feels like it's well vested in that you're being rewarded with the currency you need or new items to forge uh, as you go through it. They also do a really great job with the world itself. The first game, again, it it was just kind of bland, uh, not a lot of life to it. The enemies didn't, you know, the NPCs, there wasn't much there. This one, there's a lot more people to to meet. The locations are more varied and interesting in design. It's more of a sci-fi cityscape than like being in a warehouse, which it kind of felt like in the first one. Yeah. Um, And then... um, These characters are sending you on quests, and it's a good thing because you spend a lot of time exploring in this game. And this is where a lot of people might fall off, is multi-tiered, very confusing environments, uh, and they want you to explore every nook and cranny to find not only like hidden chests that hold gear and stuff like that, but also just paths forward. Uh, It can be very confusing uh, figuring out where to go in this game. But again, they reward you well. When you figure these things out, there's usually a shortcut that opens to your like your hub. Uh, So a hub might start off pointing you in one direction, but all of a sudden after two hours, it splinters into like six different access points that take you to like right to a boss or right to another zone. Mm -hmm. Um, But again, you got to want to explore these environments. And, you know, it's like Dark Souls and that enemies will jump out of corners or break through a box that's, you know, separating you and, and your path and then hit you with one hit and you're dead. Uh Um, There's moments like that. Uh, So there is a little bit of cautious exploration, but uh, it it, all together, it works out really well. It is very true to the original, but it makes the right steps to improve upon it in pretty much every way. The combat feels really great. Yeah. You have this little drone with you that you can send out to stun enemies or just pick them away from far. action, okay. So let's say you have two enemies running at you at once. You can auto lock on the one in front and then have your drone hitting the one behind uh, to take that one out or stagger the one behind. Yeah. So there's some dual play of, of, of combat. Look at this. The evolution of souls is here and it's a, it's a co-op buddy. Mm. Uh, That's great. They go overboard with uh, the kind of other players being able to point at things in the environment for you to need to know. Oh no. But there's like, Graffiti everywhere from players, like just little feathers that they put up on the wall, just like an icon. It's everywhere. It's overdone. Players do help you or try to trick you uh, a lot in this, which is fun. But at the same time, it's just like, I can't really enjoy the environments you put together now that there's all these little decals everywhere. It's too much of a strange game. It is. Game. Yeah, I get it. Uh, uh, so is your that's, review... That's totally it. That's what Death Stranding is. Well, I mean, it's very clearly... He didn't make the new Souls. genre. Deck 13 <laughs> did. Oh. Yeah, Deck 13. Are they Polish? What, what's their deal? I'm not sure. Okay. But they developed the first one. They're doing this one. Yeah. Focus Home published. Cool. Do you have a score for Search Not two? yet, because I'm still going through it. Like, this game is huge. I'm oh, like really? 40 hours in. Uh, there's new gameplay plus... Uh, or New Game pl- uh, Plus that actually adds a new sequence at the beginning of the game, which yeah. is kind of cool, like Nier Automata kind of changed up things. Huh. And then there's also New Game Plus Plus oh, no. that supposedly shakes up stuff mm-hmm. again. So um, this is a game they want you to keep playing for a long time, and uh, I've enjoyed pretty much every second of it. Uh, is it going to make your top 10? No. Is it going to make Game Informer's top 50? Top 15, probably. Top 15, personally. Interesting. Mm. Game Informer top 50, it better. Okay. Mm. Surge 2. Oh. Yes, Dan Tech. Just say, yeah, there's a new game plus for, for Code Vein as well. And f- if you want some more points, check out the review, which should be on the site right now. Uh huh. Hey, and if you yeah. want to play through that 6 5 again, New Game Plus. <laughs> One mean, more time. Yeah, hey, uh, you know, or, yeah. or tweet me and I can answer any questions. I, I, I wanted this game to be good. Okay? I know. I want to make I that know. very clear for the people who are going to kill me in the comments. No, nah, look, I man, really I really wanted to like this game. And it's a shame that in this matchup between the two Titans, Reiner wins with his game. Yeah. Mm. It turns out every game I play, I go into, I want it to be good, Dan. Mm. Oh. Wouldn't yeah. it be yeah. nice if every game was a 10? <laughs> <laughs> I do too. <sighs> uh, do you guys want to move on to emails? Sure. Here okay. we go. And welcome back to the Informer Show. We have some wonderful emails people sent in to podcastinginformer.com. And to help respond to these emails, not necessarily answer them, but just honor them and acknowledge them, we have Leo Vader. Thank you. We have Ben Reeves. They exist. 
And we have Dan Tech. It is so good to be here. <laughs> Still here! Uh, Podcast at Gameformer.com. Uh, people sent in thoughts, questions, words of wisdom, uh, feedback, complaints, dares, trivia. Podcast at Gameformer.com. Anything that makes the show better. Then, Leo, do you know what we do next? Then we vote on our favorite one. That's right. And then we put a pin in the big board where that person's from to honor them. Because this show is about honoring the people that write in. That's good. Each we need to get everyone. some more pins on that big board. We need to get some some of the underrepresented territories. You mm-hmm. know what? F it. Let's put a pin in the location from every email we get. Let's wow. just so... No, we're not This is unprecedented. Because then it means nothing, right? Yeah. Yes. No. That's a it, terrible this idea. This means something. <laughs> we mean something. Uh, okay. Oh, first email here. Oh. Uh, oh, <laughs> there's a first one. I love emails. <laughs> Someday there'll be a last one. That is correct. Mm. Chris Bunyag from Glendale, California says, Hey, peeps. Kotaka recently posted an article about how the new Final Fantasy VII remake box art is going to mislead consumers because it doesn't say anything about being part one of a series. What's your take on it? I think that's extremely correct. I think yeah. it, it yeah. should identify that it's part one, but at the same time, I get what they're doing with that box. Like, they're really... It's... You know, they want to call upon what that, uh, you know, the original game. The I trickery. <laughs> yes. It should, be, it should be on there somewhere. Uh, okay, but wh- I mean, I think the important detail here is what the back of the box looks like. If they were going to put that info on there, it seems like they'd want to put that on the back. <laughs> so do you think there's going to be like a cryptic nod? Like it's going to say like, the greatest adventure through Midgar ever. Begins. Yes. Something, oh, like, something that. like begins, yeah, it makes that's sense. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. That's smart. That would it. be terrible. See how Cloud's journey begins? Something cryptic like that is my guess. Realistically, I get the impulse to not want to put it on the front of the box, but like how how many sales do you think they'd actually lose if they had just part one on there? Would they lose sales? Like what's the I don't people think, would think it's less of a product, probably. You think so? There would be people out there that thought that. They wouldn't be right, I don't think. But well, they I think, think that it's would be tough true. and not to be too much I'm not on square side with this. But, like, the name of the game isn't part one. And if you put that on there, I feel like it'd somehow have to imply that. Like, seriously, what would you want them to put on the front? Would you want them to say part one? Would you want fine print that says... I mean, just think about this. Like, what would you even name that? You know, like you said, not part yeah. one. What do you want? You can't say Final Fantasy VII Midgar. That's also really bad. They have a precedent for bad. naming games Final Fantasy X-2. Oh, you know, yeah. they could go Final <laughs> Fantasy seven one. Final like, Fantasy 7 2. 7 1. 7 1. 7 1. Stupid R. naming convention. You're I right. I get it. <laughs> they did name a game on the Apple Arcade, Various Day Life. So, you know, I guess anything, <laughs> anything's oh, game. No. This is better fun. than that. Um, I, it's somebody on Twitter brought up, too, that, like, you know, uh, when they bought StarCraft 2, they hadn't been following the news and they didn't know that it was going to cut off with the Terran campaign. Mm. And oh. I think there's even going to be more of that style of outrage when this game is released. I think there are going to be a lot of people really? that buy this and then go, Wait, what? Credits are rolling? And, there, you know, will, there will be some. You never know when it's going to be. What, 30 yeah. hours, 40 hours into they the game, set, whatever they, it is. We don't know, but they said a full length game, right? Whatever right. that means. Full length square game, what? 40, 40 hours. I still think, I would go so far, let's say physical consumers only. Consumers okay. of physical goods. Uh-huh. I would bet a majority of them will be surprised when the game ends. A majority. Really? The I majority. So. I'm going to go with that. Hmm. I think, I think you're going out on a limb. I think this game's going to be in so many of those Walmart stores everywhere. I it think people be. are going to be like, oh, I like that game. Pick it up and they'll be like, what the hell? And they'll probably like it. <laughs> they'll <laughs> like being cut off. The they won't like being cut off. They'll yeah. like the experience they have. I'm sure. Yeah, when I heard about this, I thought of a uh, Lyft driver I had a few months ago who was talking about uh, how he bought Black Ops 4, not yeah. realizing there wouldn't be a campaign. Oh, interesting. Right. Which, right. like, that's so easy to miss. And you buy yeah. 12 yeah. Call of Duty games before that that all have a campaign, and then yes. suddenly this one doesn't. It yes. doesn't yes. say on the box, okay. no campaign this right. time. Right, right. <laughs> right. So what do you think? You want it on the front? Front and center? Yeah, I, should we just make that call and do that? Yeah, we're, well, we're all doing right. that right now. We're making yeah, a let's... Sharpie on the Shinra Tower. <laughs> go to part the one. Just put it right on the sword. Uh-huh. We own GameStop, so we could just go in and write it on the boxes. Oh, that's Is that what's right. going on? I think so. I okay. think that's what's happening. Uh, I bet I bet the back will hint at it in some way. They're not I mean, going to be as blatant to... as saying part right. one, but they right. are going to They're going to hint at it. I hope but so. But then when they have all three or four or however many they're, they're making and they put out the complete collection, what's that called? That will happen, Complete collection? Yeah. Yeah, that'll be on the PlayStation Six. Um, there are a lot of people writing into the podcast that are that are stressed out about like the collector's edition and stuff. They're like, "What do I do? Do I buy this collector's edition multiple? You times? You wait fifteen years, yeah, and then yeah. you play the whole thing. It's well, gonna have different so like things to go with the 
whatever the next collection is. Like mm. part two is going to have a different statue or something. Yeah, so a statue will be it. like of Nanaki or something. Yeah. Or C2. You, you for the old yeah, C2 yeah, crying. Kate, Kate Sith or whatever. Comes with a light side of Sephiroth. Body. Yeah, a ticket to the real golden saucer. All yeah, kinds Sephiroth of stuff. body oh, pillow. There you go. Yeah. Full yeah. size oh, yeah. cloud motorcycle. We're not going to see the golden saucer in this. I just got no. sad. That's right. What's going to be interesting is like however they end the game. Because like there's been like mm. sequels to games before and so this will this next one will be a sequel, but like, is it going to feel like this crazy cliffhanger ending? Right. What's the? You have to wait five years. To I get don't think so. I think it'll be like interesting to me. Oh, yeah. Is how they're going to handle character progression across the game? Like, does just your save file yeah, just huh? roll over, or do you start Mass Effect style? Like, what if you just buy the second one? Do you just get a cookie cutter crew ready to go, or yeah? How's that work? Yeah, especially I'm, since it'll probably be on a different console. I wonder has Square ever messed around with like importing saves? I guess like Japanese Square uh, specifically. Oh, I Because like the Deus Ex, did that import your Human Revolution save or anything like that mm. on PC? Or? I don't remember. Maybe. Okay, but in terms of like Final Fantasy, like I don't think 13 to 13 2 were like, did that do anything like, like that? Are they going to cap things? Because theoretically, you know some guy out there is going to grind to right. level 99 in, in Midgar. I'm yeah. saving yeah. Aerith! Yeah. 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 But I mean, yeah. if they're full-size games, you know, yeah. you don't necessarily feel like you're losing something by not being able to cross over stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Potentially. Right. Yeah. Theoretically. I bet they'll change it up. Couple questions for this game. A lot of questions. Anyways, uh, Sam from Columbus, Ohio says, I'm fairly young. Quit bragging. <laughs> hey. And uh, wait a minute. He missed the original release of the Final Fantasy games. Whoa. What? How I guess it he? doesn't pay to be young, oh, does it, Sam? Sucker. Who's laughing now? I'll, I'll trade you. You don't have any culture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, although I watched my older brother play them occasionally. All right, you have something going through. <laughs> sure. Um, do you have your brother's email? He should write in too. I'd yeah. To hear his he sounds like a cool guy. Yeah, I do mm-hmm. like the cut of that guy's jib. Yeah. He says the remakes or remasters look really good, but where do I start? It's interesting. The same guy. Let me just break down everything he said, because he says remakes, remasters. So I think he's like roping in eight and stuff like that, which is you know a different okay, case. But he says different. having no concept of the story, do I need to play other games before the Final Fantasy VII remake? No. Like six is what he's saying? I think that's, that's where he is going. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, no, no. You, you can jump right in. To. But would you guys... Hang on a second. He says, like, how can you make this more complicated? Well, get a lot of this <laughs> mf <MF-er>. He <laughs> says, please help. Thanks. The GI show is my second favorite podcast. What? Oh, okay. the, well, he has to list the first one there, too. Yeah, right? tell us what your f- first favorite is. That, Gaming, that you're a coward. Up. I feel like Game Former Show is a good, like, second, second to show. fourth favorite I think Yeah, like you keep best. up with it, but it's not your favorite. Yes. I buy that yes. for sure. That's what? the goal we're aiming for with this <laughs> yeah. podcast. I like that Netflix show in the in the bottom window that people click on after right. the main one. Right. You want to try yeah. to guess what his favorite show is, Dan? The Blacklist. The Blacklist. <laughs> there it is. The Blacklist <laughs> on Apple Podcast. The audio. So right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you guys think? Uh, several people write it. All right. I have written it about, like, do I play 7 okay. before the remake? I think my take on it is... If you, we're already we're so close to this actually happening, you might as well just wait and play the new one if you've never played the original. Well, they got yeah. several months. That's I, I mean, time. yeah, but we're talking like this thing has been so many years. Like, I just say if you haven't done it already, why not just start with the new one? I don't I think, think there's so. any benefit to playing the old one first. Plus, yeah, yeah you I don't think, think there's any benefit. No, there, there if is, you're going to experience the story anyway, all you're doing is spoiling the story for yourself when you'd see it in a yeah. cooler, more beautiful context. It's an well, interesting take. Things. If you want to be a little bit more of the historian, you can. If you're a real you know, game nerd, you're into the development story, stuff like that, I think that'd be interesting. But at the same time, you're probably in the minority for people playing the remake, right? How and do you so, know he's a minority? No, because he hasn't played the other oh. one. So I'm just saying, lot. if you play that one... Then I think you'll have a more interesting take than a lot of your friends or a lot of the oh. people online, right? So you can have the advantage mm-hmm. of being uh. like, as someone who never played the original, yeah. hear ye, hear ye. Ring that bell. Ring that bell, bro. Performative. I say, play it if you want. <laughs> That's what I say. He's already in that realm. We're trying to play go. your. <laughs> we're trying. To, we're trying to I, give him some advice I, here. I don't. I wouldn't say there's no value in having played the original. I think they're gonna like play up the nostalgia quite a bit. So it's like, hey, yeah. if you played this original game, you'll kind of get where we're mm-hmm. going for with this. No. If you no. want to do something and we say you shouldn't, don't do it. Yeah. Imagine me slapping Final Fantasy <laughs> 7 out of your hands. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Sam's his name? Yeah, yeah. this this Sam guy. Sam, drop it! What he should Leo, do is he's go, go play, uh, go play four oh, six. a little baby boy and you're hurting him. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! I can't play M-weighted game. <laughs> <laughs> M, is it for milk? <laughs> uh, here's what you do realistically, Sam. You go on YouTube, 
Uh-huh. You're young. You understand how this works. Yeah. You've uh, heard of this. Yeah. Go to YouTube. Final Fantasy VII playthrough. Uh-huh. Part four. No commentary. And watch like six minutes of that right now. Okay. You Ask your have, parents permission. Why would you do a second? Just to have that loose frame of reference uh-huh. so that by the time March rolls around, he'll kind of forget any sure. of the specifics, but he'll still remember like, oh, this is kind of what the game looked well, like. Well, hold on. How's he supposed to get out of the crib? <laughs> <laughs> Ask daddy Ask mommy or for daddy. the iPad yeah. and put it between the bars. <laughs> right. Showtime? Me watch show? <laughs> uh, yeah. I think that's a good compromise. Like, watch a couple of minutes of, like, the right, original. Right, You should watch, the, like, the CG stuff, too. Like, the stuff with, like, Cloud on the bike. Right. Because right. I thought back then that was mind-blowing. And it that'll was. be How fun. good that looked. Yeah. And then imagine that looked good. Right. And babies love, like, action <laughs> that's right. sequences. So anything, I think anything that'll catch your eye, any shiny yeah. objects. Mm. I that, bet PewDiePie's been playing it at some point. Right, so you can just, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what I mean. Look for a PewDiePie no commentary blazer. <laughs> Frankly, I wish his entire channel was no commentary. Right? Hey, wait. Hey, Why would you watch him for other, without the commentary? That's the whole point. <laughs> wait a minute. That's right. Hold I on. Think about that. Uh, Thomas yeah. from New York City writes in. He says, "Hey, folks, I've become very fascinated with the state of reviews and critique journalism over the la- last couple of years, especially in regard to how remakes are treated, which have grown in number in film and video games like Lion King and Link's Awakening." As someone who is in between generations and often hasn't experienced or has no attachment to the original versions of things, I find it a little disconcerting when every reviewer for these kind of media seems to only be written by people with extensive memory and emotional attachment to the original. Should we not be offering more fresh eye critiques for these kinds of media along with the more veteran perspective? Thank you. Fresh critiques are always great. As long as you just make it clear. I don't like it in reviews where the person has not made it clear whether Uh, this is their first time playing it or the replay. And, you know, I see the the opposite opinion shared quite frequently as well where, like, you know, somebody comes into a series playing game three or four and then, like, they never even play the other games. What are you doing? You need the context. Right. So you're saying you should have played. But that's, like, series versus remakes. I think it's a slightly different thing. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Like, what about, like, Modern Warfare? Would you want to... Read a review from somebody who hadn't played I, the original. I think in this case, that would actually be fine because it's not really a remake. The, yeah, this is this is like, yeah. But so for Final Fantasy VII, when the remake comes out, do you think people who review that should have played the original? Mm. I bet all of them will have. Yeah, well, except for the Sam yeah. guy, he better not be a reviewer. Yeah, you know, I think <laughs> little baby yeah, Sam. Toys R Us. I don't think they <laughs> will. Call him. There's so much differences, like right, that I don't think that's essential. <laughs> But you got to have the Final Fantasy person on it, regardless, right? Like, do you? I like it if there's kind of an outlier. Again, I think as long as, long as, as they clear. make it clear, yeah, I think yes. that's all that matters. Honestly, like, yeah, it'd be super interesting if, like, hey, I've never even played an RPG. Jeez. Like, what's mm-hmm. this guy's take on, for, right. on Final Fantasy? I would read that. I like, just, I mean, I, I just walked too, out I... of Plato's Cave. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I watched my brother play Final Fantasy, but <laughs> but it was only his shadow. <laughs> yeah. But I'd, yeah, I'd read it and be interested in it. But at the same time, like, I don't know if the review would be as valuable to me. Mm-hmm. Um, Resident Evil 2 context. I'm definitely well, interested in both somebody who's yeah. evaluating it as a remake and somebody who's sure. like is this a good game to have come out in 2019 right, sure. right. But, but Dan it's not valuable to you because you played the game but like what if you were a person who had never played the original wouldn't you find value in the guy who had never played the original talking yeah. about it because yeah. everyone playing Link's Awakening is like I'm, I'm oh it's spe- giving me the warm and fuzzy I'm not speaking about the original mm-hmm. thing that, that part's fine I'm talking about like mm-hmm. the person who had never played an RPG yeah. reviewing an RPG well, straight would, up there would be value in that for people who had never played RPGs like mm-hmm. hey what is this weirdo thing Hmm. This weirdo know. franchise. Or I think even, you can pick a random person off the street and they'd probably have some RPG experience. Do you know a random person? We can go find some. Interesting. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> I disagree. I think it'd be fun to read that. Hmm. I, I, I just said I thought it would be fun. I just don't think it would be as valuable to a reader. Sure. Maybe. Readers would have more fun reading it, though. I would yeah. have a lot more fun with it. Do you guys think it's a fun idea to have like a let's play of a video game? Uh-huh. But it's yeah. just the shadow of that playing. <laughs> Wait, so uh, do you see the actual gameplay, or what is this? No, it's, so you just would see, like, the TV and, you know, like, a shadow and someone, like, playing on a controller. Okay. But it's, like, a full Let's Play of a video game. <laughs> and you get all the audio. I guess you get the audio, yeah. That'd be kind of interesting to, like, like, try to pick out, like, what's happening. Yeah, kind of a silhouette, yeah. It's kind of like a Peter Pan homage. You'd see the silhouette of the gameplay? No, you just would see the TV, the I guess. The TV. Now, I don't know much about physics, but I don't think if you shine a flash on the TV, you can see the gameplay on the wall. Well, that's what I was trying to get at. Like, how artsy are you going? Is it like oh, the DK yeah. levels that are all in shadow? 
You yeah, it's it's it. as artistic as it comes, otherwise known as the DK levels <laughs> that are in all <laughs> Like maximum art, you're saying? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. High art. Uh, anyways. I'm so confused. Mike Smith um, from Lafayette, Indiana. Good oh. job, Mike. Uh, he says, hey, you seem to be struggling uh, what? last week to find fun uses for the VMU in the Dreamcast and clearly overlooked the biggest feature benefit of the VMU on the Dreamcast. Oh, filling up a trash can? Filling up a <laughs> trash can. That's interesting. I, I forgot about this. Picking your plays uh, on the VMU in sports games like NFL 2K1. Oh. Uh, because before the VMU, your opponent could see what yeah. play you were picking on the screen. Although... Could they really? Because if it just lists all the buttons, they're not seeing what button you're pressing. You can tell, though, when they go to that one screen, like when they go to that right. one defensive screen, or, or like when they're trying to do like a special plays thing where it's like right. the, fake, the fake punt's That's always cool. like on its own yeah. little... So the idea of just like you get the little VMU and you put it in there. That's, That's a really fun good. idea. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. That's great. Red Steel 1 multiplayer head of mode <laughs> where you could, uh, where it would call you on your Wiimote speaker and it would say kill player two with grenades and nobody would know what each other's mission was, but you're in like a deathmatch scenario and you've got to do It was that this. quiet? Yeah, I mean, you had to turn the volume to the lowest. Oh, but yeah, like we wouldn't, and you'd be hearing your own at the same time, so you yeah, wouldn't yeah, know yeah. what others are doing. Oh, that's fun. So I, did, I like that kind of stuff. That's fun. How did it sound coming out of that speaker? Like a walkie-talkie, you know? That's true. Mm. Hey, fully less, immersive. Less walkie, more talky, I say, in this society these days. I'm tired of all these walkie-talkie simulators. <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> it rolls right out the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> That's so much. Walkie talkies is such a better term than walking simulator. <laughs> uh, West they Bay. really should have gone with it anyway. Yeah. They. They. Come, Come on, on, Sam. Come they. on, Sam. Get Grow on up. This. You're a young kid. It's not called a crawly wally. We need, we need to get that genre going. <laughs> the crawly wally simulator. Wes Bates from Woodland, California says, hello, crew. I had a quick question I thought you might enjoy including in your podcast. Oh. That's the goal. Yeah, great. That's You get it. Um, he which, understands what this section is. Which developers are underappreciated, in your opinion? I'm talking about the folks that may not be on the Naughty Dog or CD Projekt Red level, but regularly put out solid games that are fun to play, but don't get enough sunlight. I'm going to go with Naughty Dog, I think. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the Nintendo camp, the, the subcategory... Um, one, I think we mentioned every once in a while, but I don't think Hal Laboratory gets enough credit. Oh, yeah. For cranking out a Kirby game every six well, months, plus like other weird push things me, like... box pull, or whatever the hell they're doing on this <laughs> well, side th- This one's always tough, because you figure like, you know, a lot of these studios do get, who doesn't get enough? It's, uh-huh. it's hard to say, because like even the people who do indie stuff, they get a lot of love when they get recognized, uh, right? Like, but there's still plenty of those folks. So I, I guess I'll are. go with Larian mm-hmm. Studios. Um, you don't think they get enough love? See, that's the thing. Well, what See, do they make? This then? is my exact point. So they, you know, they've uh, they made the, uh, the entire Divinity series really mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. from the beginning, and now they're actually getting good with Divinity Original Sin, Divinity Original Sin Two, and mm-hmm. obviously Baldur's expectations are very high for Baldur's Gate Three. Right. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, I like. Uh, here's why you're wrong, Dan. Oh, I like the level developer that people wouldn't even think of like inviting on a podcast, but so just quietly somebody, have been releasing somebody consistent. obscure. Sure. Yeah. And they have to have had more than one title. Yes, podcastinginform.com, send in your options, please. Well, who, mm-hmm. who does, like, Waypoint count for that? Not Waypoint. What am I thinking? Who makes Shantae? Way forward. Way forward, that's what Interesting. West Bates goes on, he says, for me, I think it's Way Forward. Yeah. I think that I think that's a pretty good choice. I mean, yeah, the new Shantae just came out for Apple. They have just been cranking out so many games throughout their history. It's all over the place. And they're always, like, consistently solid. Like Silent Hill, Book of... Shadows? Just like that one. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but they did that one that was the um, the mummy, based on the mummy movie. That's right. That was like actually a good game and everyone was like, the movie sucks, but yeah. like this game's pretty good. Now, Sam, don't be confused. It's not a movie about your mommy. No. This is a scary mommy. film. <laughs> don't yeah, check yeah. <laughs> Sam fell asleep at this point. <laughs> if it were a game, it'd be it M-rated. Uh, who made Griftlands? Is that Clay Entertainment? Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah you want, I, but you yeah, think yeah. they're under? They're sort of like oh, again. I guess you know how to use the Hanson argument. If Larian is in that, like, Clay is pretty definitely proper. Yeah, up Leo, for sure. Slamming down the veto on that one. Oh, it's like sorry. outrageous. You even threw that buddy. out. Like, there. don't starve and, and stuff like. Yeah. Yeah. No. Exactly. It's like I just don't hear that. That's the first time I've heard that developer's name out loud. Is when oh, I said really? it just okay. now. You know? Oh, interesting. Oh, that's fair. It's, it's like Mark of the Ninja now. and in, Invisible Ink. Mark of the Ninja like is nothing great. but really, yeah. really well made. Oxygen not included, which we haven't really covered in Game Informer at all. But uh, people are loving on Steam. It came out a uh, final version. Mm. Um, here's an odd one. It's a name that I bet a lot of people, even in the game industry, don't know immediately. They have consistently cranked out great games 
for the last six years, seven years at least. Okay. Visual concepts. Oh, gosh. Right? Huh. Do you know what they make? What they do? They make sports games, right? Yeah. They're like the NBA 2K games. You know, like within 2K, they have just been consistent. And I was really, my eyes were opened in appreciating sports teams more, uh, sports developer teams, I should state. Um, like at E3 years ago, we did like a one-on-one discussion interview between Patrice, like cre- uh, creator of Assassin's Creed, and then somebody that was working on the NHL series with EA. And it was really nice because that entire video is just Patrice being like, you, like sports developers do not get enough credit. Like basically mm-hmm. your development time is like nine months mm-hmm. and you constantly have to crank these games out with whole new features and stuff like that. That's a crazy endless schedule. And in terms of just getting used to shipping things and locking things down efficiently, like a lot of them pull it off pretty well. With yeah. really incredible mm-hmm. like graphics and animations. That yeah, just- for sure. Get are just a one bullet point of oh yeah they're making another one yeah exactly uh, I guess there's some new features this time around but still I think developers are they're they're trying their best and I'm sure know, every sports team is being run ragged we talk about it right now and still I'm never gonna play one you know right <laughs> <laughs> honestly though honestly NBA 2K16 with frequency vibrations <laughs> that's the that one is with a the saga worth mode? playing I, okay I know like every time I've dabbled in those 2K games like the NBA stuff it's like the production values are just on another level. Yeah. It's worth seeing, at least. Just go to PewDiePie's channel, search NBA 2K16, no commentary, part four. Mm-hmm. Um, Minus Nazi. Six minutes. <laughs> Minus. Minus. In fact, I'd recommend that for all YouTube searches. Right? <laughs> yeah. Minus Nazi real Good quick. Idea. Yeah. Um, Keep Josh, that in the clipboard. <laughs> <laughs> Josh from Kentucky. Uh, he says, Ben and Leo. Oh. Wow. Oh. Oh. He got three of us. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. Your hey, name is Leo, though. That's all right. Hey, I'm I'm completely fine with this. Are you a Leo? I am not a Leo. What are you? Don't yes. play this. F- no, okay. <laughs> oh boy. Not playing it. Uh, Josh from Kentucky hey, says, I think, Taurus. I think I want to get into video editing and software, but I'm not sure where to start. What products or resources should I look into if I eventually want to make a career out of this? Mm. Leo, simple question. It's a good question. Give oh. that answer. Steel Premiere. <laughs> Steel. Honestly, so that someday when you pay for it, you'll know how to use it. I'm taking notes. Uh, on it, yeah, Premiere, it's like a subscription service these days, but uh, mm. through Adobe, I think it's like 20 bucks a month. Pay for one month and just go whole hog on YouTube tutorials. That's going to be your best bet. Premiere is flexible enough where it's going to be usable in the future, even on a professional level. Mm-hmm. Um, and the nice thing, too, is you can log in with two accounts or two computers for any account of Premiere. So if you want to split it with a buddy, something like that, 10 mm. bucks a month, that, that's a piece of cake. For sure. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's that's all you got to do. Is that Mac and PC compatible? That's right. Yeah. Adobe Ooh. Premiere, run, don't walk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm splitting yeah. it with a buddy. Does yeah. he need anything else though? Like, or is that like the main thing? A computer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> a lot of talent. He'll need a yeah. computer. <laughs> yeah, raw, animalistic virality. And <laughs> a hunger. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, Brendan from Jersey City, New Jersey. Just call it City. Okay. Right then, he says, hey, uh, I normally give myself a monthly allowance for buying games to keep myself from buying every new game that releases. I'm 30. Mm -hmm. Uh, Last week, I went to buy Control, but instead took that money and decided to get some older games from this generation that have been on my backlog. I got the following games for less than $10. Batman Arkham Knight, Prey, Titanfall 2, God of War 3 Remastered, and Last of Us Remastered. All those games came to less than what Control costs. I bet you felt like a real sucker when they put Batman Arkham Knight for free on (laughs) PC. Yeah. But still, good idea. So my question is, what are some older games from this generation that people may have missed that they should check out now that they can grab them for cheap? Hmm. Good I am woefully unaware of price movements, so it's good. Oh, yeah. Well, I was thinking like like the first year, I was trying to think what came out. I was like, I know Shadow of Mordor, but... To, right. Looking back, did people consider that great, or was it just a time and place? Like, hey, we had nothing else that year. Place. But yeah. you know, especially because they stripped all the microtransactions out of it and kind of got a smattering of applause for doing that, I think Shadow of War is an the interesting sequel. choice. Like, you know, just thinking back, I know people weren't completely gaga over that game when it came out, but that's still a really weird, bold game that Monolith and Warner Brothers yeah. released. And I feel like it's worth going back to and, and just saying, hey, Good job, industry, for cranking out something so systemic and bizarre. I went way yeah. too hard on the story because I was like, I just want to get the story out of the way so I can focus on the other cool stuff. Right. And then the story was 30 hours long and I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I didn't want to play anymore afterwards. Yeah, yeah. But just uh, systems-wise, yeah, it's totally. so There's unique. so much cool in that game. Yeah, it's a fun game. If yeah. you've never played it, uh, Witcher 3 is great. You can probably get it cheap now, right? Yeah, I think so. Definitely you smirked. Forgot. Do you no. not like it or what? I don't know. 
Maybe no, I'm just expecting good more like under the radar recommendations. Oh, yeah. Sleeping sure. Dogs Definitive Edition is dirt cheap. Oh, really? technically from the generation before, but still worth playing if you haven't. Yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. holds up for sure. Rayman Legends. Yeah, uh, Wii U generation. I Those think are Wii good. U is the best version, but still it'd be fun to play. And for that's dirt cheap on PlayStation and stuff. Um, there we go. Nick from Chicago. Uh, oh no. He says, hey, as someone who works in advertising and enjoys video games, I have an increasing fear of these two worlds colliding. Mm. It feels like it's only a matter of time with development budgets and advertiser demand increasing. Well, there have been implementations in the past. The latest Death Stranding gameplay is particularly concerning. Between the monster sponsorship and the TV show ad on Sam's toilet, it doesn't <laughs> seem that subtly, that subtlety will be prioritized. Video games are an individualized, trackable experience. Immersion will be broken if I enter my avatar's hub and see an ad for shoes I was looking at on Amazon the night before. What do you think? Do you think uh, we'll ever find a happy medium that is acceptable, or will there be more and more ads going into games? What well, do you think that would break your immersion? Like, in some ways, doesn't it kind of feel more real if there's like ads happening in the game because you're like, there's ads in our world, I mean, so it makes the God, world no. feel more real. Depends a little bit on the game, but I don't think has a game ever. Maybe we'll have to wait for Amazon to actually release some games. Um, but do you think anybody's ever going to tie into the Google history, Amazon? I mean, yeah. Stadia stuff might, yeah, right? for sure. I mean, Absolutely. it's integrated with YouTube. I mean, all that stuff is ripe for opportunities for companies to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, and some games have been literal ads already. Like I was just Name about, one. Like the, the new KFC game is... No, I think that's art. What's that an ad for? I have no idea, but I that's really want right a famous bull. <laughs> that's I really want there. a famous bull right now. Uh, is it weird to anybody that it's a dating simulator and it's called finger licking? I think they just is made that it. weird to anybody else on earth? Oh, is that what it's called? It's yes. called finger licking good or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's called like Whoa. a finger licking experience. It's very on your dates. Or it's something. very it's very tame for a dating sim, by the way. There's no actual in the name though. You're not gonna believe what KFC stands for. The Colonel is a hottie. <laughs> what can I say? But um. You can't say yeah, that. Yeah, just say, like, this chicken will make you go So down. as far as the products being integrated. Lay down. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, what, what Keep what was plowing that ahead, voice? please, Dan. Tra- I was trying. I got, I got a little sidetrack there. Um, <laughs> How did you like getting cut off? Uh, it's fine with me. Will you okay, just stop it? Go, go Dan, go. <laughs> Ads. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's inevitable. <laughs> let's just go, let's just get to the I'll cut to the point. Yep. Right, I think it's inevitable. It's going to happen. But why does it? I don't. I just don't even understand why it bothers people. I guess. You I mean, it doesn't bother you that you pay for one product and then it's used as a vessel to serve. Yeah. To not only what integrate about, all of your searches. It's annoying and, if like if there's a thing popping up that I have to close. But if there's just an ad taking place in the world that I'm in. So in Death Stranding, if there's just a billboard in the world that says "Buy Monster Energy Drink," you won't care. I mean, with, why would that bother you though? What? Because it breaks immersion. <laughs> it bothers me. But it me. doesn't because, I, like, if there's a billboard for some fake ad, doesn't that break immersion too? Because you're like, oh, this no. ad isn't a real thing. <laughs> no, because that's <laughs> immersion. This character the world. isn't a real thing. <laughs> that's I know. The dumbest you, thing I, I've I ever do heard. largely agree with you though. If it's like in universe, like in Burnout, seeing an ad for whatever on a billboard, some real thing in a real universe, right? It is almost more immersive. And I, th- I think the, is- the issue for me comes when it's like the third layer of monetization, right? Because lots of things across all media use product placement as a way to make some of their money back guaranteed, uh-huh. you know, before it's successful. Right. And I think if a game were to just do that instead of microtransactions or whatever, it wouldn't right. be a big deal. It's but if it's like microtransactions, be... season pass, and product placement everywhere, I think that gets really annoying. It's never going to be instead of, and it's going to like use all the same retargeting yeah. techniques that you get like when you right. search for snacks on Google one day and then Facebook serves up like 30 snack ads and... Do you think? Yeah, realistically, for sure. Do you think Stadia games could ever do anything interesting since they know us better than we do? Um, you know, like just hey, they're making an RPG and an NPC in the game is like named after a friend of yours, <laughs> or there's just something where it's like the NPC will be like, "I have a fetch quest. Go and fetch these sneakers that it knows you were searching for like two days before." <laughs> like, would that be <laughs> kind of cool to have it just like subtly bled in, not even to sell anything, but just like to pull more from your life in some interesting ways. You hate in-game yeah. advertising, but you like that idea? Well, if there's a, yeah, that's fr- all, a freaky that's style game, right? But it's just like, hey, instead of saying, okay, in this RPG, we heard about some far-off land that uh. was tortured by Satan or whatever, and now we will know that it's Minneapolis because that's where you live. Like, it'll just swap oh, okay. out the name or something? Sure. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Not all thoughts need to be thought through before they're said on this podcast. That's I don't care how many times I have to say it. That's why you keep inviting me. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ryan from Thomasville, Georgia. After this email, they're going to 
have it be Thomas from Ryanville because it's a whopper. <laughs> says, Dear Ben, should Tetris replace lock picking mini games? Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just every mini game is Tetris. Just different Which, shaped lock picks going yeah. down. Hank Rogers. Oh, yeah. I think that's what he's going for. <laughs> Most yeah. lock picking mini games can't even be called games. You know, they're just barely mm-hmm. interactive like sequences that you're forced to do. But Applying a- torque. <laughs> the hell out of here. But if there was an ad in there, then reason right. would be all for oh, it. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. If those Tetris pieces were like little Burger King burgers. Mm. Or having fingers that need lock. to be licked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're having trouble picking the lines. Like, yo, you need some energy? Grab a monster. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Or better yet, a Red Bull. And then it shines yeah. and you can just click it and boom, it's at your house. What's the oh. idea there? So you drink... It's called monster because you drink it and then you become a monster or you're getting right. the energy of a monster. Are monsters known for being energetic? Red Bull yeah, gives pretty... you wings. Monster turns you into a monster. <laughs> <laughs> Choose what you want. Gamer fuel. Yeah. I don't know. Are monsters all... I guess they're energetic because we only see them when they're scaring us. Right. So you have to be pretty energetic to be scared. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. Sam, write in. What do the monsters in your closet look like? Uh, we want to know. Are they energetic? Are they slothy? Are they funny? And they are there. Yeah. If you haven't seen them yet, check. <laughs> Late at night by yourself. Trust us. Bah! Uh, Glenn from (laughs) Palmdale, California. Back over you, Sam. (laughs) Glenn from Palmdale, California, home of the SR-71. Which is what? Got the Blackbird? Oh, is that what that is? Um, Leo, you want to Google SR-71? And if it ends up being the Blackbird plane, uh, someone's got to kiss me on the cheek. They're going to change it to Palm from Glendale. (laughs) So Palm from Glendale writes in, he says, hey, Game Reformer, uh, I am currently in planning my wedding that is early next year. Uh-huh. Congratulations. Oh. Congrats, dude. And my soon-to-be wife is letting me have a Raspberry Pi arcade cabinet at the reception. Oh, what an angel. That's fun. My question for you is, what are your top 10 games that I should have there? I'm looking for games that would be fun for the designated drivers and the drinkers, and also a few games that can be enjoyed by our older family members that haven't played games since the 80s arcades. This is a question deep in my soul. It's a tough one. I love this question. Yeah. Because playing a lot of arcade games and trying to find the ones that rise to the top is all I care about. You probably want stuff that's like multiplayer friendly. That's true. But I think number one choice, it's so basic, but you have to go Miss Pac-Man. Number one, have that default on the screen. Because it's like the best arcade game, right? It's probably, it's at least top three greatest arcade games of all time. And on top of that, there's a cute cutscene where Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man meet after what oh, the second or third level. That's true. It's romantic. Meet cute. Mm-hmm. It's a meet cute. Yeah. No, it's, then they have a baby. Everybody's going to be asking you, "Where's the little backpack baby?" That's right. Uh, yeah, and it's just unquestionably fun. But multiplayer. Okay, so what were you thinking, Reeves? Uh, well, I was thinking like the the Turtles game or like the old X Men or Simpsons like right. side scrolling. Just those are load up crowd on pleasers. Coins. I feel like yeah. Simpsons in particular, I feel like our friend John Carson at his wedding had Miss Pac Man and Simpsons. And I was like, oh, that's nice. a great double whammy, yeah, right? Those are both great. And yeah. we're talking about real cabinets. Uh, like, or so, well, it's uh, a Raspberry, raspberry Pi. Pi. Oh, yeah. I see. Interesting. Yeah, yeah I would have I, said like a light gun game would be would be fun for everyone. Oh, why? Everybody knows wedding? how to point and shoot. At Leo at a wedding. Like what? A time yeah. crisis type thing? Yeah, Area Fifty One. Mm. Are you implying their wedding's a time crisis? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a, a strategic uh, aircraft, by the way, reconnaissance. Is it really? SR-71. Fantastic. Yeah. Nice, Not happening. Uh, Fantastic. Really? Come on, on. You know you yeah, want it. At least make the noise so audio listeners think you did it. Yeah. <laughs> oh! Oh my god. Wow. I didn't say really do it. <laughs> so uh, I think you got to have a fighting game in there, right? Hey, but uh-huh. here's the thing. I think if you have like a Street Fighter 2 people would be like, oh, I'm too intimidated because some people are going to be really good at that. So I think go fighting game that's slightly off a beaten path. I think, honestly, Marvel vs. Capcom has been such a big hit. Oh, yeah. Like, that's a great one. And good masher. Good masher, great characters, or even like a Darkstalkers, like those animations are so fun. Mm. Uh, I know it's not as good of a game, technically, as Street Fighter, but just you're looking for basic fun well, that no one's going to be intimidated by. With right. the Marvel stuff, like Marvel's so hot right now that like people will recognize those characters and be like, oh, what is that? I want to play with Iron Man. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tapper, I recently uh, had a nice. love affair with. Yes. Um, Can you play that two player? Is there a two player mode? No, I think it alternates kind of like you know Mario one style or something. One person can coach the other. Though. That's right. Uh, if the control scheme will allow for it, um, you could go with the best arcade game, uh, Robotron 2084. Mm-hmm. Uh, Leo, you're a fan of that I one. was thinking mm-hmm. Smash TV, actually, because that That's you can play two-player. That's true. That's true. God, uh, someone needs to mod Robotron. Maybe it's somewhere on MAME for multiplayer. Because I like Smash TV fine, but right. it's not as tight and as clean as a Robotron. Yeah. I bet that mod exists. Don't you think? There's no reason it wouldn't. Was no. there a reason? 
Was there ever like a two player version of Geometry Wars or something like that? Geometry Wars 2. Was it? <laughs> well, not for the arcades. Part 2. Yeah. Yeah. Um, here's a weird one. There's a game called uh, Metro Cross that Namco released in the 80s. Uh, that's very fun. It's just like this obstacle course like in a nuclear power plant. Um, but very fun, jazzy music. And I think it's a fun just like mm. how far can you get in this wacky world. Well, and of course, you got to have one-on-one government. One-on-one government yeah. is a must. It's the greatest basketball game. It's basketball <laughs> where one guy's a monkey. You need to play one-on-one government at your wedding. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if we were playing that at your lake lot and you have just a list and we saw that one on the list had no context for what it is one-on-one government (laughs) what could this be like some kind of like risk style rts yeah yeah. no it's a basketball game (laughs) (laughs) it's a basketball game uh sushi writes in well hold on you didn't even mention like your favorite arcade game of all time did you robotron robotron oh i thought you were gonna for sure do the the cowboy riders yeah sunset riders the cowboy one the cowboy one yeah that's good um and it's cool i don't know there's something about it I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's it not it, wedding it material, man. Well, I love it, but it doesn't seem like mass appeal enough. Like someone's like, oh, there's this gun game with cowboys. Like maybe. I mean, it's great, but I'm thinking old about... People, old people there love cowboys. Yeah, man. They do John love Wayne. cowboys. John Wayne. That's true. John Wayne Gacy? Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Big, that's right. Big it's the cowboy. final boss. Uh, Sushir writes in. He says, hey, my question is, which country slash culture did you get to know about while playing a game and what did you learn? Lastly, thanks for putting the pin on India when I wrote the letter last time. It means a big deal to me. Thank you. Thank Aww. you for writing in. Uh, country slash culture, did you get to know about while playing a game? Japan from Yakuza. Oh, that's yeah. a great one. Yeah. Especially just I, like how it feels to go into stores and exactly. stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I went to Japan uh, after I played Yakuza Zero and I was like, waste of money. Yeah. <laughs> been here. I've right. been here. Why did I even bother? Right, yeah. right. It really is crazy how accurate the feel is. Yeah. Tokyo Jungle say, too. Persona <laughs> yeah. as well. Oh, yeah. It has that Japanese vibe. Yeah. Because it's in Japan. Smart. <laughs> but, I mean, are there other countries other than Japan? It feels like Japan's like the big go-to because so many games so are made from Japan. there. we've got Japan. What country was USA? Grim Fandango in? Oh, Land of the Dead? Land of the Dead. Yeah, I've Is been that there. A, do we have a pin in that yet? Mm. <laughs> we should. God's country. <laughs> <laughs> I wish more games were set in other countries, though. Yeah. Do you yeah. feel like Max Payne 3 gave you, like... Rio de Janeiro vibe. You feel like you know what it's like there? No. Well, only because I didn't play it. Um, <laughs> Leo played it twice on PS3. Mm. Did you like it that much? Yeah. Blake? Watch Dogs 2. Oh. Uh, San Francisco. Oh, yeah. Another thing, I played that game and then ended up going there. I was like, mm. oh, yeah. Same thing. Same thing. Been here. Uh, Blake Kibby writes in. Kibby! Uh, says, hey, Ben and people in the room and booth. Oh, yeah. We love it, everybody. Hey, what are the best sequels? I think Portal 2, Assassin's Creed 2, Halo 2, all built on the mechanics of the first game, improved problem areas, added new content, and all that stuff. The fact that he goes only for two, like the, the first sequel, yeah. I wonder if that's what mm. he's implying. Oh, interesting. So. Okay. Yeah, I was going to mention Portal 2, actually, because that one's great. Half-Life Hard 2? Hard to top. Yeah. So would you count uh, Link to the Past? No. Why not? We're going second? Oh, I guess that's not the second one. Right. You're right. Because in my mind, like I think the greatest sequel of all time is GTA 2 to 3. But if we're only going first to 2, uh. then that's tricky. Uh, here's kind of a good pull. Uh, Watch Dogs 2? <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, okay. tremendously underrated. And yeah, like better yeah. hacking than the first one. Right, Delivered right. the promise better. Of course, different vibe, but great. When when you guys say Portal 2 is a slam dunk, am I in the wrong for like... Ah. Look, I love Portal 2 a lot, but there's something... When you're going from... Great to great. When you're going from great to great, but when you're going from like short, tight... Basically, college flaw- project, college project, basically flawless, right? Uh-huh. To bigger experience, slightly more ups and downs. I think more jokes that miss hmm. just by more jokes overall, more jokes overall at the same time. But I just see it as a it's a masterpiece, but a little bit more rickety by nature than the first one. So I don't see it I as that much. I wouldn't call it rickety in any way. It's like yeah. slightly more I would relatively say rickety, less tight. That's right. But it's still a great game. So what do yeah. you guys think of that? I don't know. Well, I, I hear what you're saying, though. It's like, for me, it's more of just like, well, you're already starting with an amazing game with Portal 1. Yeah. So, like, I'd be more interested in, like, what was a game that was, like, not super great, but then the sequel came out and was, like, amazing? Uncharted, too. Diablo to Diablo. Uncharted's good. Oh, yeah, that's a great example, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> like, Dan slowly, he was inching towards the mic. As he rubbed the lipstick off his lips first, and then he was inching towards the mic slowly. I didn't want to interrupt know. anybody, so I, I was waiting for my moment there. You're very yeah, sweet. Yeah, true. 
Here's a question for you, Dan. Yeah. Um, oh, backward sock from Cambridge, Minnesota. <laughs> um, he says, That's great. What is the ideal sibling situation? How many? Boy or girl? Middle child? Oldest with all younger brothers? This is such a good question. What is a it? weird question. I, I think you need it. at least one sibling. You need one. You need at least one. Mm-hmm. Only child. Come on. Yeah. Come Get on. Come on. Get Find a sibling. Uh, I like a good mix. You like Boys a good and girls. mix. So what's ideal? You're not asking what's good. What's <laughs> ideal? Give me the ideal right. sibling situation. Three. And you are? One of them. <laughs> this uh, is good. <laughs> I like being the oldest. Of? Of the children. What do you mean? Are you the, you're not the oldest. I'm the oldest, but I have an older half-sister who didn't live with us, so I'm a weirdo. Okay. So is that ideal? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you should have uh, three siblings that you're close to, uh-huh. and then one who you occasionally see. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is tricky. Like, I'm the youngest, and I have two older sisters. Not great. Like, I don't mind being the youngest, but they got to be buddies, and I was left in the cold. So do you feel weird that you were the only guy? A little bit. Well, you would like to have a little brother? Are you saying I have a surprise waiting for me? <laughs> Sam, come on in. <laughs> <That's> Sam. <laughs> Dad, <laughs> No, brother, brother. No, brother, brother. brother. Uh, this is tough. Leo? You got to be the oldest of 18 brothers. <laughs> and then you've got two baseball teams to play. Oh, oh that's great. smart. That's smart. And because you're oldest, you get to be a team captain. Right, right. It's tricky. Okay, what if it is just as simple as, mm, maybe ideal would be if the family can support it financially. Don't want to stress anybody out now. Uh-huh. Let's say middle child. Mm, middle childs are freaks, though, aren't they? Oh, boy. Unanimously. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Super. But what if there's two middle child types? <laughs> oh, twins. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay, here's, a, here's, a, here's the ideal. It's like a top. So... Twins in the middle, but you got much backs. So no, <laughs> so it's twins in the middle. You're one of the twins. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. um, and whatever gender you are, okay, the twin is the opposite. Okay, that's then great. you have older brother, older sister. Is yeah, young. Pick on you yeah, less. older sister, yeah. younger, younger brother. brother. That yeah. way you can beat up on him. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Is that it? That sounds perfect. Did we do it? That's it. I'm sure you nailed it there. Nailed it. Panel. And the results are... Ding! Ding, 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 ding. Twins in the middle, but she got much back. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. Dan, do you like haikus? I'm sure I'm going to love this one. Okay, well, uh, somebody who just labeled themselves as God's country wrote in saying, here are four haikus representing different GI members. Oh my See God. if you can solve this riddle. Oh, oh he's going to have to guess who the member is? Yeah. Uh, well, I think we all have to guess. It's not just for Are me. you familiar with members, Dan? <laughs> it says, I'm afraid there are no fireworks for Joseph, <laughs> and now he is sad. <laughs> oh, who could it be? Dan's going to think about it. What, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, the next one. Because that's like impossible. Mr. Jose Hune to that's me. That's right. Yeah. Uh, the stoic tack man doesn't believe in backlogs. His eyebrows tell all. I mean, our names are right in these haikus, <laughs> yeah, right? Like, it's made it super easy. That's why I thought the first one was confused. It was like a trick question because it has a name in it. Uh, I don't know. That's that clearly Andy too. Reiner. Uh, a life in the booth. <laughs> editing the sights and sounds as he plays Red Dead. Mm. Uh, no name. No name. He might be right here. That's true. Producing the show. Does this make the show better? <laughs> oh, I'm so dumb. <laughs> He might be here When too. I said it was sent from God's country, that's just the final line of the haiku. <laughs> Does this make the show better sent from God's country? Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't get your name, uh, person that wrote in. Uh, wonderful. <laughs> are we attracted to haikus because they sound dumb, but our human brain infers that there must be wisdom because it is cryptic? I just like right. because they're simple. You know, they're simple, yeah. but you, get, you try to get all of your stuff condensed into like... But they sound words. smart. It sounds like, ah, this is what like the master on top of the Japanese mountain taught me. You know? Right, even though... Why? Why? I'm going to invent a new thing. They're called baikus. And it's four, eight, three. Really? For syllables. Four, eight, three. Okay. Reeves, would you like to give a little baiku? <laughs> Goodbye, my friend. His name was Leo Vader. Der. <laughs> He's kind of dumb. <laughs> That's really wise. Yeah. I've never thought of yeah. it that way. Think yeah, about that's it. interesting. Yeah. He's kind of dumb. <laughs> 
Three syllables. What are you, a psychiatrist? Kind of. Dumb. <laughs> That's three syllables. You have to scream it. That's how a baiku works yeah. at the end. <laughs> uh, JD from Nelson Mandela Bay? <laughs> what? Cool. Where's that? What country? I don't know. It's hmm. God's country. Uh, there we go. Hmm. Uh, dear... Wait. Wait. Ma- isn't Mandela Bay a thing? Mandalorian Bay. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's where they load the cargo. That's right. Um, oh, is this good? <laughs> I don't know. Dear Ben and GI Show, with the success... Oh, have you heard about this? With the success of the ports and remasters like Divinity, Diablo, and Dark Souls proving that the Switch can deliver on the promise to turn young and old greats into replayable portable games, how confident are you that we will see the following third-party franchises on the Nintendo Switch? Metal Gear Solid. Will we Mm. ever see Metal Gear Solid on the Nintendo Switch? Any of the titles? That's correct. What's the latest Konami has done with that franchise? So that's including future titles. No, that's... So they um, did um, survive, but I mean, like they haven't put in, put anything back out since then, right? Since they survive, any no. other remasters? They, I mean, they supported the Switch early on with uh, Bomberman. To yeah. be fair, so they're aware that it exists. Uh, Contra was just on the Switch, so it, they, it's on their radar. They sort of do things. They kind of do they kind stuff. Of do stuff. Mm-hmm. I could see. It feels like it'd just be so easy to do, though, that you would have heard about it by now. The just the collection. Yeah, yeah. it's free money. It is. I bet it'll happen in the Switch's lifetime. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, you guys. Um, Arkham? Think we'll see Arkham games on the Switch? Mm. Sure. Mm. Why not? I think it might have trouble with those. I, yes, a considering a complex, the PC was really chugger yeah, lugging. Big world, complex animations. Yeah. I don't think it could do night, obviously, but do you think it could get Asylum? Because they just I remastered Asylum. Asylum more like It was that. last generation. I bet they at least tried. But again, it feels like, well, why hasn't that happened yet? Yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Would they do the Armored Edition from the Wii U? Mm. Or is that confusing because that's all relying on the touchscreen and stuff? Oh. Remember? Well, I don't know. I never played that version. What? What? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Mr. Highfalutin. <laughs> Too good to play Arkham on a Wii U. That's right. <laughs> uh, Mass Effect? I mean, that's the dream, but EA, oh, I think I said... I don't think so. Yeah, EA said the Switch can lick our butt or whatever, yeah, which I, I thought was inappropriate. Yeah. Um, our butt. You yeah. Know? Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> what does that mean? The E and the A. Yeah. Both <laughs> cheeks. E my A. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, Dan Tech looks horrible. Hold on. Do you get it, Dan? Uh, Dan. I'm KOTOR. I'm, I'm, Here we go. Right. Everyone's having a good time. <laughs> yeah. KOTOR is the same ballpark. Yeah. Uh, Red Dead Redemption. Red I Dead Redemption like 1 on the Switch. I mean, Eleanor, Rockstar is uh, aware. That's a good point. It's going on their own platform now. But uh, also, <laughs> well, yeah. why not GTA 2? Do you, GTA which one do you think they bring fun. over first? Probably GTA because it's <sighs> more popular, right? They'd probably, realistically, they're probably going to port San Andreas to the Switch first or yeah. whatever they've done on the phone. You don't think they could do I think they could or... do a version of 4. But 5, I don't think so. No. I don't think there's been really? anything Really? It was on last-gen consoles. Isn't yeah, the Switch basically as powerful? I mean, no. you look at like Saints Row was chug-a-lugging on that Switch. Yeah, so. Breath of the Wild's chugging and it's got much more s- Link's Awakening graphics. is chugging. Ooh. Yeah. I feel Gulp. ashamed that we didn't mention that more on the podcast because that really runs like butt in a lot of transitions. Oh, really? and it's insane that None Nintendo of released though. it like yeah. that. I right? didn't really, I haven't really noticed it too much. Really? I think I just have a more powerful switch. Oh, is that right? I spelled wine on it <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> you test all your consoles by trying to make it more powerful. Yeah, it's a little it. drunk now. So is that because smooth. you turned into a little bit of a monster when you drink wine? That's right. Okay. Wine. <laughs> Give me more, please. <laughs> right? Just one cup. Yeah. You know? That's a big cup. And right. then the night's over. Right, right. Yeah. It's like, yeah, somebody pours you a glass of wine, then you take the bottle. <laughs> Otherwise known as the funniest joke you can do on planet Earth. Wine, more like mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Andrew Burns. Dan, do you like that joke? I actually, yeah, I did, actually. Like, <laughs> no, but like, the I didn't classic. want to make a big secret. I can't compete with the rest of the great <laughs> and ass jokes that are going on. Whoa, 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 Kill that. That's Elite offensive. City here, okay. Um, <laughs> whoa, can we recover? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. This is spiraling. No, but like the I joke. Think we're closer now. The though. joke from like Jetson's intro, where it's like his dumb daughter, and she like hands out, or he hands her the money from his wallet, and then she takes the wallet instead. Wow. Or like the the Garfield joke, where he like cuts a slice of cake and then takes the large slice. Oh yeah, that's funny. I really believe that's like top three. Jokes. It's like a good it. joke in the history of humanity. I don't, I, don't <laughs> I don't think it's top three, but I know. Name a joke concept no, that's no, no, funnier no. than that. But if you actually see somebody do that in real life, it's that's the funniest funny. thing. That's really funny. Oh, if it was like a birthday party and somebody cuts a slice of cake. <laughs> And you just grab 
Like that would be the funniest thing. Uh, we got like back when we first started. We like we got cakes for our birthdays. I don't know why we just still don't do that. Oh, when you what? first started living. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> when I was one, uh, when I first started a game performer, oh. and I got like a Superman cake. Wait, or whoa, 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 whoa. They'd give out cakes for birthdays? That's what I'm saying. We don't do that anymore. For like wow. the first two years, I was here. Oh. We should do that again. Yeah. Wow. And then uh, I got a Superman cake, so I cut out the S in his chest in the middle of the cake before anybody has <laughs> to take a piece, and I took that one single piece in the middle of the cake. It looked really fun. Uh-huh. And then you turned into a monster. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> cake. <laughs> Hang on. Dan? Yeah. Let the record show was smiling a little bit. Let the record show. Andrew Burns <laughs> from Leonard, Texas writes in. He says, hey, guys, uh, over on the Overblood Facebook page, we've compiled our 100 greatest games of all time based on a number of us voting for top 10 games. Mm. I'm sending you the link below, but I thought you might be interested in what we came up with as our top 10 and some other fascinating tidbits from the list. Great. Do you guys want to guess what's here? Red Take Dead. turns guessing and then... Breath of the Wild. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's lower roll. Dan Tack, what's your guess? Are we just guessing in the top 10? Yeah, I'll tell you if it's in the top 10. Bloodborne. Bloodborne is number four. Oh. It's a good community. They know their games. Yep. Ben Reeves. Okay. I'm going to say Skyrim. Hang on. The number one RPG of all time is not on this list really? for top 10. Yep. <laughs> hmm. no Incomplete Skyrim. data set no. <laughs> thinking. The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt? Yeah. Okay, Wild Hunt. That's number six wow. on the list. Dan Tack. Red Dead? Which one? Two. Red Dead Redemption 2 is number one on that list for wow. greatest game of all time. Wow. Cool. Okay. Yeah. All right. Half-Life 2. Incorrect. What? Incorrect. No Half-Life 2. Look later. The Legend of Zelda The Breath of the Wild. By Legend of Nintendo. Zelda The Breath of the Wild. And it's on there? It's on there. It's number five. Fantech. It's getting hard now. Mm-hmm. Final Fantasy 7? Correct. Number nine. Final wow. Fantasy seven. Wow. Wow. All right. I got to redeem myself. Is that what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, Super Mario Galaxy. Incorrect. I'm saying the list is incorrect for not having Super Mario Galaxy. Wow. How am I blowing it? Or how did they blow it? Yeah. <laughs> Leo Vader. Super Mario 64. Incorrect. These are smart choices. Boink. Yeah, that was me checking <laughs> to make sure. <laughs> Dan. I mean, there's not many left. Super Mario World? Incorrect. I'll give you a hint, Dan. Gotta be a Mario you mentioned this game earlier in the podcast. You said play this game. Final yeah. Fantasy VI. Final Fantasy VI is number seven. Code <laughs> And don't think I said that about Code Vein. <laughs> uh, ben Reeves. Uh, Portal. Incorrect. Neither of the portals. Uh, are there other games? There are four left. Okay. It's but other games on the planet. Probably like Dota or something crap is on there. Uh, oh, God. Uh, Dota, oh, if you're listening, turn the podcast off. We don't I, I want your isn't. support. Yeah, get like, out of here. That group is really more into the more into traditional games. Console crowd. Dota, more like done. Mm. Duh. Mm. That. Mm-hmm. Dump da da dum. Dump da Overwatch? Incorrect. Great guess, though. Dan, let's see. There is... Ooh, I would say three of these games involve... Stealth. Hmm. What? Mm-hmm. Three of the four games involve stealth. Yes. Oh, I'm out then. Well, I had a guess. I was going to guess Street Fighter 2. Incorrect. Wow. How is that not on there? World of Warcraft? Because they're younger in the Facebook group. Uh, there's no World of Warcraft. Huh. So, Metal Gear, solid. Incorrect. Five. Incorrect. <laughs> four. No <laughs> Metal Gear solid, numbers. but three stealth games. There could be a Metal Gear on there. Stealth games? Or it's just not Are you one guessing a specific number? Three. There we go. Oh, Number 10 three. is Metal Gear Solid okay. 3. All right. Assassin's Creed 2. There we go, Dan Tack. I don't know if you saw this list, but yep, number 8, I, Assassin's Creed 2. Uh, what's the stealth games? I was okay, it okay. Down. Mm. What other... So there's one more stealth game left on there. I mean, I wouldn't consider it a purely stealth game, but stealth is a big component of this game. Mm. It's very relevant to what people are listening to right now. Okay. Hold on. Is Bioshock on there? It is not. What? It oh, not. man. How wild. Okay. How wild was number five? How wild? Uh, <laughs> Far Cry? Incorrect. Good guess, though. Relevant to what people are listening the to last right of us. now. There we go. Leo oh, Vander, Last of Us, number three. Uh, I thought we had already said that for some reason. All that's left is number two, the second greatest game of all time, according to the Game Informer's Overblood Facebook page. What, missing? what a weird-o list of games. There is... Ma- Mass Effect. Yeah, give us a hint. 
2. There we go, Dan Tech. Mm. Mass Effect 2. Way to go. Good job, Dan. Notably, Red Dead 2 won in a landslide, getting 14 more points over Mass Effect 2 at second place. However, note that Red Dead 1, which was in the top 10 of both the editors and readers' top 300 last year, didn't even make it onto the list. Wow. Uh, other notes. Top 6 were all from this decade. Best time to be playing games. Okay. Uh, only one Mario game, Super Mario World, at number 74. Right behind Oddworld Stranger's Wrath Wait, at what? number 73. What? Wow. Weird. Woo! Huh. Conversely, Crash Bandicoot had three games with Crash Warp, number 59, Crash 2, 60. Warped okay. over Crash 2 is very interesting. So do you think we have a, like a lot of young mm-hmm. kids who like grew up with PlayStations? Maybe so a PlayStation age. crowd, yeah. 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 But smarter. But they're smart, yeah. 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 Uh, Crash Team Racing at 72. Spyro the Dragon was the mascot with the highest game. Spyro 2 at number 30. Um, the best represented series, Final Fantasy with six entries. Final Fantasy 7, number 7. Final Fantasy... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, 6, number 7. 7 is 9. 15 is 17. 14 is 31. 15, 9 yeah. is 43. 4 is 52. It makes Final sense. Final Fantasy just has the most games. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Buy a million tickets to the lottery, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Two games on the list, number 86 and 99. Oh, boy. Here, oh, this is fun. Can no longer be played today. What do you think those games are? Mm. What? These can games no longer be played in any no way. Longer. That, uh, uh, one can no longer be played in any way. The other is you can't get it. City of Heroes? No. But if you have it, you can play it. Devotion? No. I didn't think that was going to make the list. It's number 86, greatest games of all like time. EverQuest? No. You you that's still alive. That. If yeah. you have it, you can play it. What am I? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that true for any game? No. <laughs> It's been taken down from stores. Oh, PT? PT! Oh. The PYT itself. But you can still play that if you have it. <laughs> you can play it if you have right. it. Also, number 99, which can no longer be played today, is also an acronym. PS3 game, that's an acronym. MAG. Yes. Oh. <laughs> they, what? They went with MAG. No. no. Mag that was 100% there. a joke was, suggestion. That was just wow. to me. Hey, I personally back the Overblood group. I don't care what you hey, even I say. I would love to have someone write in and explain what made that game great and special. Yeah. That's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Please, write in about MAG. We'll take all MAG fan mail. <laughs> MAG, I don't know. Interesting Mega. that Bioshock's not on there, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Very. I misread that. It was MAGA. It's number 99. <laughs> and you can't play that today, right? With yeah, the clips. Kid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do you guys like for email of the week? I mean, I like, I like that one, to be honest. But it's such I a, like the it is good. product placement one. I think that's a oh, prescient really? conversation yeah. to be having. That's that was a good one. conversation. Prescient. Prescient. You guys really it, sold me on it. Also, the, like the Final Fantasy one was fun. Mm, yeah, I like yeah the the box art thing. Yeah. yeah, I do think that was interesting. Um, I think I maybe like the VMU thing is just a weird outlier. I will uh, I'll go with uh, advertising. Yeah, yeah let's, advertising let's that great. one. Great. Let's That's uh, Nick from Chicago. Congratulations, great. Nick and Chicago. I believe on the big board on for the, the second board, time. Man. We'll no. figure it out. Way to go, Shy Town. Not so shy anymore, are you? When it comes to podcasts, Gameformer.com, right? Mm. Hey, uh, stay tuned. We're going to talk about Apple games and great. gaming on your phone, Dan. What's my favorite and thing? And you have an Android, so you can't come. <laughs> I, I, I play an Android. I play on Apple as well. What are you talking about? Well, how? I have an iPad. Granted, it can't use the, the game store yet because it's not to 13. But You've been lying to me this I have had an iPad. On every single one of our trips we've gone on, I have the iPad recording. Here we go. Stay tuned for a fun conversation about Apple Arcade. And welcome back to the Game Informer Show. I have a dream team here. I have Matt Miller. Hello. Straight out of my dreams. I have Andrew Reiner. I don't want to be in your dreams. Uh, and <laughs> Andrew McNamara. Hello. How's it Some, going? Very good. Uh, somebody wrote into the podcast, I think it was last week, describing a very thorough dream that they had that you starred in. And you were going to like feed them a taco wait, 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 or something. Wait, what does the word thorough mean in this It instance? was hot and heavy and detailed. <laughs> so, ah, that's, well, I mean, cool. I didn't know I didn't <laughs> cool. remember me that much. Are you giving everybody free permission to dream about you whoever they want? Hey, you know what? Let's get that fanfic out there. Hell you know what yeah. I mean? Like, uh, let's do it. Who's going to yeah. ship with who? Absolutely. Yeah. Nightly uh, fanfic in your head. That's what dreams are, ultimately. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about a dream come true for the game industry. Uh, Apple Arcade, which launched not too long ago. Um, they launched with, they say 100 games. I think they're somewhere around 70 right now. I get the sense that there's some Liars! That, are, that are kind of rolling out. 
uh, very gradually here in these first few weeks, maybe. Right, I right. don't know. I don't have the full picture of that yet, but there's definitely games that they hyped as being part of the launch window that aren't showing up yet. Yeah. Um, initial impressions. Uh, what do y'all think of this? What do we call it? Service? Storefront? Uh, I think you call it Apple Arcade, <laughs> I think is what you call it. All right, it. Andy, what do you think of Apple Arcade? Subscription. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's I mean, I, I talked about this in a letter a long time ago, it feels like now, but maybe it wasn't that long ago, which was along the lines of like, you know, there's, there is a desire by companies to be the quote unquote Netflix of games, right? And that's what this service is in line, is that like a curated world that you pay a subscription to and you get access to a bunch of games. Now, Five bucks a month. Five bucks a month. And Apple took it to the next level in that like they, they, they made a commitment to say that the games on here would not include extended purchase options. Which is awesome. That's the most radical thing here. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. so, that's what's killing mobile gaming. Or ads. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I would argue, I don't think that's what's killing mobile gaming since mobile gaming is making more money than any other group. <laughs> right. So I, I, I don't think it's, it's killing, killing my interest but, in mobile uh, gaming. How about I, that? I think it's... It, it, they're different crowds, right? I mean, I think that's something really important because there's games that I'm still playing, once again, that are, are classic mobile games that I think are still fun on mobile games. Arcade does not make them less fun or less engaging or that I don't spend money on them. So, But it is a place where people who want that experience that's... that's well, actually, I would say more than that. It's an opportunity for premium games that were definitely suffering on the Apple Store. And by the way, I'd like to point out, all the suffering on the Apple Store, in my opinion, is Apple's fault. Interesting. Uh, uh, in, in a lot of ways, but like premium games were really suffering as far as like their ability to get out there and make money. So if you wanted to make a 99 cent game or a $5 game, it was difficult to get, for it to resonate and for you to make your money back and for it to be, for you to not have those kind of extended pay options as right. a way to fund your experience. Which is, I think, the biggest hurdle for Apple Arcade overall. I think, are we all in the same camp of like a little bit positive on it? It's interesting. I I mean, I'm I'm quite positive on it. Okay. Um, more than I thought I was going to be before I downloaded it, uh, or, or down started downloading games from it. Which, by the way, it's free initially. For we like said, one we, month. One yeah, month. One month free. You, you, but I mean, you they, try they, it out. they put you on the reoccurring thing. Oh at yeah. That point. You, so you better have credit it. card. Yeah. In there. You better stop it, um, or it's gonna be it's gonna charge you five dollars. But, but I, I guess my point is is that like you know a month of having access to several dozen games, several of which. I think we can say are are quite good. Yeah. Um, is is no no small thing. I, yeah. Uh, it is uh, maybe more so than for some people. It is it is what it feels like. What I wa have wanted mobile games to be for a while. I kind of got pretty into mobile games about I don't know five years ago. Like um, peak Infinity Blade is yeah, probably yeah yeah I played a lot of those <laughs> those games that were like you know they were going to charge me somewhere between like two and six dollars. And then I just had like a game, yeah. right? And they were, it was built for mobile. And so sometimes they were a little bit more simple or straightforward in controls or, or dynamics or, or whatever than, than a traditional console game. But some of them were, were really good. And in recent years, I've just been increasingly turned off um, because I just, for me personally, I cannot handle the, the, the uh, push out of immersion that comes from the like, okay, yep. well, I played this for two hours. But now, unless I buy gems, I'm going to, like, I, I can't... Yeah, that's the thing that's been hurting it, right? It's, like, yeah, for yeah. me especially, like, every game is free. Yeah. And it's a big property that you want to invest time in, like Transformers or something sure. for us. And then it's the you hit the paywall, like, and immediately. It, and it's just not... Uh, my problem with it isn't the money. I think that's one of the things that... that uh, people get hung up on, or I mean, the balance that it br that it breaks. That's right? the issue. Yeah. Is that uh, for me as a person who plays a lot of video games, the I want an, an entirely curated experience with my game that is the best game that can be on offer. Right, like that's why I'm I'm willing to pay for a high end console and 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 the games that that come along with it is because that's that's what I'm looking for, right? Which, and so, by the way, though, to be fair, I mean, there are high-end console games that have done the same oh, path. So, like... It, don't it, get it, me started, I'm Andy. Just saying, I mean, but I'm just saying it's not mutually... It's not just, like, only on mobile no. that this that these new ways to distribute and sell games happen. Now, that said, mobile was the, like, canary in the coal mine. Yes. Uh, no doubt, and got all and that stuff out there. And, and it, it also has been, in the last couple of years, almost everything... Is it has is that a plague get button, right? Rather than buy well, console, you get console it. has a cold. Mobile is plagued to the <laughs> right. point of like it is an outbreak. Well, that's the crazy thing. I think what I was going to say is that that's the biggest hurdle for Apple Arcade is these games are pure and that's great, 
But when the entire storefront over the last 10 years has conditioned me to feel a certain way about these games, I yeah. can go into like Cappy's Grindstone, which is a game that's kind of like Puzzle and Dragons. I enjoy quite a bit. But every instinct of my gaming instincts are just like saying that it's going to be BS. Yeah, that yeah. I cannot treat it as a fair game just because every game I've played that's like it has been complete BS they, and will eventually stop me from playing. They have a huge communications challenge in front of them here to reach audiences of the people who I would guess are listening to this podcast. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like people who are engaged gamers, they probably have a hobby game like Overwatch or Destiny that they play every night. They probably have a gaming PC uh, that they play some stuff on. Like that, that kind of person, I think, has been conditioned over the years to just be like, oh, mobile games, you mean bad games. Like, Basically, yeah. Uh, and I know uh, there's exceptions to that rule and there's lots of games that people have engaged with uh, on uh, whether you're talking about on Apple or Android or whatever. But by and large, I think there is this sentiment uh, among whatever you want to call them, the core gamer or whatever, that, that this is just, it's a lesser experience to oh, yeah. be engaging with. Or it. you just play it for a short amount of time yeah. and it's not like a really big meaty thing. Yes. And, and Apple Arcade is very actively trying to, to combat that. I mean, admittedly, these aren't, these aren't trying to compete with an Overwatch or a Call of Duty or whatever. A lot of them are small indie projects. A lot of them are are uh, very discreet kind of structures to how you play them. You had you talked about one of the really good ones, Grindstone, is is a sort of a very simple but fun game. But that said, you're getting you're, with that subscription, you're getting a lot of uh, access to a lot of games. It is it is a lot. It's almost overwhelming. But yeah. I think you talk about you know the people listening to this podcast. And you say, okay, they have to go against their instincts when it comes to the microtransactions. But then also just, I don't think people need that many free games. If they want free games, hey, there were six Batman games just released on the Epic Game Store for free. You know, like there are free games out the yin-yang. Like we right. are not in dire need. So why is the appeal of, hey, here's a boatload of games on a control scheme that you don't like? It's well, like I think okay. it's, I mean, it's a curated collection, which I think is, is great. And it, it goes to what Andy was saying about it just being you know, there was a flood and now someone has gone through and pulled out the important, some of the important little drops of water, right? A yeah. uh, hundred of them or whatever, 70, whatever it is well, at and, launch. And, and the, you're right. I mean, that, that sense of it's here, there are some games here that are to, to share with your kid. And there are some games here where if you like, you like kind of fighting game things, there's that. If you want to have those kind of classy, artsy puzzle games, there's that, that group. And they've been very conscious in that selection process and um, and so I appreciate that. And and to your other point, I mean, I in the long term, while I don't think this this aspect of it is launched yet, I think one of the other big game changers here is the recent um, uh, option to play with a controller that right. they're putting in that you can literally like take an Xbox One controller and 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 play these games. You, if you go for the sort of the Apple TV thing, um, or you can play on Mac or whatever, to be able to have it on a big screen. Um, which not all of these games lend themselves to. Some of them are very distinctly touchscreen games, but others of them will be, I think, quite fun to play with a controller. And I haven't yet, um, to be clear. But I'm looking forward to that because it will be... Um, I mean, I actually think Apple Arcade is a pretty good uh, description for what this thing is. I mean, it it taps in a little bit to what I remember loving about the arcade experience and um, back in the day of like going in and putting like, coins in constantly. Well, not putting <laughs> coins, but you have a subscription, right? Uh -huh. You're going to say like, I'm going to put a little money to go to the arcade. Right. And then you just have this, like uh, this selection in front of you and you're like, Oh, there's Donkey Kong over here. I could go play Pac-Man or mm -hmm. there's whatever. I can no, play, no, no, no. Uh, Frogger. Yeah. Sorry. yeah. Well, in this case, Frogger. I was excited for that game because I like cute games and stuff, but like Frogger with physics, like, I don't know. It is I, straight up Frogger. I don't know. Yeah. Well, no, it's not. I yeah. wish it, it was. It is yeah. straight up. I, I go agree. from here to there, right? Like, but everything's all soft and mushy. Like, yeah. I like a good grid focused Frogger. But, I'm with I, you. I don't like the Frogger game. I, I don't I, like I, it either. I don't like it. Um, I haven't tried that one. But I, I think there are there are games on here that are, are standouts that um, with some exploration, you you find, yeah. you know, and you, you start hitting on like, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, and, you know, it's literally the matter of just like 
hitting the download button, trying it out for 10 minutes, and then, oh, I didn't like that. I'll go try something else. Yeah. I, one of the things I'd like to point out, I do feel like, I mean, at least in my Twitter feed, I saw, I felt like was a lot of hyperbole about it where people yeah. were like, this is the greatest invention since sliced bread kind of thing that people were really going off on it. And my problem is, is not that it's not good. I, I do think it's, it's, it, it is an, an interesting addition to gaming and particularly mobile because I know for me, I have problems sometimes discovery right mm -hmm. finding mm -hmm. games is like always a really really difficult thing on mobile and like because there's a thousand games a week there could have already been these 70 games available i just never would have found them totally right? you, you know so this helps me find those and i want more games that i can play on my phone when i have some free time that are fun that are not uh necessarily uh free to play models or or pay to win models um but um the hyperbole is crazy because for me it's like they put a bunch of games at launch to build a base to say, like, we want the games, there to be, like, 70 to 100 games on here, to judge this platform and not seeing what, what's going to happen over the next three, four months. Like, how many games do we get a month? What, what are the quality of those games? Right. Does, the, does, does the quality diminish over time? And the thing I think about, too, is that, like, if you take that classic, uh, like, kind of uh, gym subscription model, you know what I mean, where they want people to to give them money, but then mm -hmm. maybe not use it, right? Where, like, at a gym, it's great because they don't use the treadmill, but or even come to the gym or even come to the gym and you still make the money right but right. in this case they're going to pay for these exclusive games no matter what there's no like if someone doesn't use something apple has still they keep adding treadmills so, yeah, yeah. yeah they've still yeah. paid to have these games be a part of. now that said whatever distribution that happens to the developers is not entirely clear to me but i think that's an interesting story as we understand how developers are paid which i know right now i think they're getting a pretty good lump sum right but over time does that lump sum diminish? Does the quality of the games on Apple Arcade diminish? Does the, the, the ability for the developers to make money diminish? Um, like what, what is the long-term success of, of Apple Arcade? Now that's it. This first month is great. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I, I'm definitely like throwing out like my concerns as I you know, analyze it and think about where it's gonna go. Um, but uh, I think it's a great start, but people who think that like it's a like, the, it's game changers game over, Right. I think there's a there's a long way to go on that road yeah. before we know that for sure. That said, I've played a lot of great games on my phone lately. I've played more phone games than I have, I think, in a while. Other than Clash? Uh, other than I still yeah, I <laughs> Clash still Royale, that is. And I I would I wouldn't even argue like someone in my head, I was like, eh, five dollars is pretty good for Apple Arcade. I think the five dollars I spend for my battle pass in in Royale I get more gameplay out of than I do. We're addicted thus far. to that game though. I am. I, I, to be fair, I am, and I. I and am I, too. Yeah. And I and I like the game. It's a fun game. It's a game that, by the way, they're they're preparing as I think a lot of mobile games are to remove things like loot boxes and find different ways to engage and monetize their products as loot yeah. boxes become more illegal, uh, in, in danger. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 so, uh, I, 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 I think. It's a smidge. A smidge illegal. <laughs> I do think that, I, I mean, I hope that that does lead to, I mean, I, I don't mind, you know, one of the things again, I'm not against, I think to your point of like mobile games have a bad rap, I think the word microtransaction has a bad rap. I don't mind paying a developer for things that I think are cool right. or additions yes. to my games. Yes. Right. I, I, now that said, if I say microtransactions or that I'm okay with them, people will be like, you're evil and like, you know, whale hunting and all that stuff. And like, I, I, I'm against predatory type, type usage right course, yeah but something like crash like clash i think does a good job of having a free-to-play way that you could do it certainly it, it takes more time but you can always play the game and the game is usually pretty fun i think no matter what level you're at and that's you know uh, kudos to their matchmaking is it do i get to play to the top tier without spending some money you know quickly or putting in the time certainly that is a that is a reality of it but i do think there is a way for games to have monetized and free-to-play versions and have microtransactions and it be okay it's just non-predatory right right no, not non like loot boxes that like you know uh influencers get better loot boxes that give more you know prizes that stuff is i, I mean that stuff is evil yeah. through and through you don't have um, to worry about that with arcade you right. don't have to worry about with arcade which is <laughs> great to roll yeah. around arcade again. and right now for me to your point grindstone is amazing i think yeah, grindstone, is that your favorite? Grind, that's my favorite game on on the launch campy games like I, I think like crushed it it's a great 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 game i'm my my five dollar subscription that i'm gonna pay next month game. has been well worth it just for uh grindstone and then you know cruising around and checking out other games you know periodically i have not fallen into any wells yet with any of the other ones like i yeah. have with grindstone but i've played them and been like oh that's neat that's my thing is 
it's off to a good start, but it doesn't have the, what would you call it, like Stranger Things or the one game everybody's talking about the that you have rat. to play it, right? It seems like Sinar I Wild mean, Hearts is kind of that because like, oh, it's I don't so like much cheaper. Yeah, I'm not crazy about it, but it's like, oh, on Switch, it actually costs, you know, what is it, 20 bucks, 50 I mean, bucks? It shows you can get a console game on Apple Arcade, right? right. To a degree, or a PC game. I think one of the, the weird things that's going on right now is that because there was such a short cycle uh, between announcement and release here on this thing. And it's only been out for, what, a week today, I think, right? Something in that vicinity. Yeah. Um, the If there is a killer app in there, we might not know about it yet, right? Like, like there well, are things or, in there. I, I mean, collectively, people aren't jumping up and down over one particular game. I, I don't game. think there's any one game that is completely stand, stand out all above the rest. But there's, you know... I've been playing pretty consistently for the last several days, and there's a lot of stuff that I mean I, I've barely scratched the surface of the available games. Right. right? There's there's a game in there that I didn't even know was part of the launch lineup. That's something that I've uh, a project called uh, Earth Knight. It's an endless runner that I've been I've been tracking and doing preview coverage of for years. Yeah. From this this small developer, I didn't know that they were working in partnership with Apple on this on this um, Apple Arcade thing. So I saw it in there. I was like, "Whoa, sweet! This thing is finally out!" And it's it's a really fun little endless runner game. Even um, searching within the games, I think, is difficult. And I wish Apple presented the developers yeah. uh, somewhere in that search process because it's like describing the genres and stuff like that. But just trying to find like, oh, I know that Cappy made a game in here. Yeah, yeah. Trying to find what that game was or, in the store itself is like, okay, you'll be digging for a long time. Like I, it, it, there's a there's a partnership in there between um snowman the guys who made like alto's oh Odyssey. yeah i don't know which game it is yeah exactly and they they partnered with another studio um on this game called where cards fall which is a very pretty mm -hmm. little um kind of puzzle adventure kind of a game huh but yeah you're totally you're totally right there's a there's a discoverability challenge right now when you go to the app store of knowing what what ones of these should i be paying attention right. to um, because there's a, but it's there's better dozens. than it was. It's better it's than, way it was. Better. than it was. Yes, the thing for me is like, I paid five dollars. I never would have downloaded any of these games on their own. Like, not even a thought about these. Even there's grindstone. No way. Like, oh, it's free to play, but it's worth checking out. No, because I would have been that would have been a turnoff. I was more yeah. attracted yeah. to if it said two ninety nine, right? where I knew maybe I wasn't going to get nickel and dime. Right. I know I keep weighing on this this thing, but that has been my deterrent on mobile games. Is like. Oh my God. Like I played this a half hour. I like it. And now it's just broken. Yeah. Unless I, I mean, spend $10. I, I mean, I do like to point out, I mean, one of the things that we have that is a, is a hard thing to understand is that on a global level, mobile games do really well. Not everyone is like a, an editor at a game magazine and has sure, like, but like, everybody like, like an endless money. stream. Of like, <laughs> and they want to have I, their money. Yeah, but I, but I, I do think I, I always try to be very careful about judging how people spend money to be entertainment, right? Like that, that's everyone's I'm not options. judging other I'm judging me. Oh, you are. I, definitely, I agree. I'm just saying <laughs> that like y we also come from a, we come from a privileged place of having more access to games access than, right. than, than, games, than no anybody doubt. else We in the also world consume that. more games than anybody probably too. Like this uh, is what we do. This yeah. is our living and our lives. Yeah, probably. I, I just, I'm just trying to point out that it, sure. it's, that's the hard bias that's very difficult. I, I'm, I'm just saying that as my own, I have a hard time discussing mobile games and I go like, oh, this game is this, when it's like, I don't, you know what I mean? We, we do have our own perspective that's hard to see things through, especially when, you know, we're going to see most of these great, expensive games done for right. free. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, the thing that's compelling here, at least for one of the things that I, I did take notice of when I looked around, was that like I'd see something like Hot Lava, one of the games oh, in there, yeah. mm -hmm. and like went to, you know, opened up my Steam, uh, and it was like there, and it's like, oh, that's sixteen dollars or whatever yeah. here. You know what I mean? Or Cyanar, like these are, and you add those up, and there's, I mean, no one's done the math yet, but I mean, I'm sure there's, you know, a hundred dollars worth of games that you could buy on other platforms that you're getting for five dollars here. Yep. Uh, and maybe the, you know, the way to make them be compelling is to, as Miller's point, you know, get a controller connected to it, and then the the experience is very similar. Um, and I think that's cool and terrifying. To your point earlier, of like, there's a lot of free games out there. Yeah. There are an amazing amount of free games. You could, um, and that's a terrifying thing to think that if developers aren't getting paid to make games, what is the future of games? You know, like when Apple or anyone else doesn't want to pay to get them to get people on their phones. Like, I, I do think there is a, a, a fear as they spend a lot of money and really like push free games everywhere. Does it diminish your need to get a new game, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which, if, if if it works out economically for everybody to be okay at the end of the day, maybe it's fine. But mm -hmm. well, yeah, it's I mean, certainly. I think it's weird that like if there's only 
six five dollar subscriptions out there. Right. Yeah, Game Pass, I, 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 Xbox Live, you get free games. PlayStation Plus, you get free games. It's like. I mean, that, I mean, is and, that enough for people? And, and they never cost, have to buy a game again? <laughs> and games cost more now, or at least the big AAA games cost more now than they ever did. Like, you know, a, yeah. a thing that we're mad that we pay $60 for, we probably should be paying... 90 Yeah, yeah. significantly more for. Yeah. I mean, and by the way, I'm not trying to be anti-consumer. I mean, it's mm-hmm. great that they can yeah. keep the cost down and that we can buy things like these subscriptions, but it does make for a dangerous game for developers. Yeah, I, I think one of the... the, the the points that is important to me to get across to folks who maybe haven't tried it tried it out yet is that I have seen a lot of of vitriol around this service that I think is unwarranted uh, because there are these people who, like me, have come to really have a like um, uh, an distrust. axe to grind and a distrust yeah. of the mobile gaming scene, right? And and the reality here is like. These are these are the games and the the game developers that you want to be supporting if right. you're part of that group. Like these are the people who have held out right. against the monetization thing, and they were looking for a way to like, how the heck are we gonna make money on this little art puzzle game that we want to put out? And this is an avenue. I mean, say it, you may you may have all sorts of other issues with Apple as a company or their broader corporate practices, and more power to you if that's like how you feel about it. But I think this service in particular is doing something different. I mean, yeah. it's trying to it's trying to offer a lifeline to developers who deserve a lifeline um, and on a platform where they had been cut off. For, yes, where premium right. games had been yes. like really, and this this is enabling them to to get that money and get sort of that barrier that we so often found that people were like, they'd been taught to get everything for free that when they even saw a dollar, they were like, no. Yeah. Right, right. And, and, and now that it's a sub, maybe that, yeah. that will change the, the that. anxiety I have is the number of subs I'm going to have <laughs> and have to manage at any given time. And I'm feeling sure. that with TV shows and movies right now. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, Disney Plus is coming. Okay, I got Hulu and Netflix and Amazon Prime. What are you going to cancel? Yeah, like... Yeah. Oh, I like this DC show. Oh, I can only watch that on the the DC network yeah. or Star Trek on CBS. It's like, oh my God, it, it feels like I have, you know, Comcast again. Like, mm-hmm. but it's not, you know, all at once. I'm paying them individually, and it might be more expensive. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, it, so I'm starting to feel that now a little bit with games. You know, it's like Game Pass, Ubisoft's going to have their thing, uh, Google Stadia. You know, it's like all these things are starting to add up and. I want to be a part of all of it, but I mean that's just not feasible. Do you really need Stadia Pro? I think you can live without Stadia no, I mean, Pro. Day one, I'm going to want to check everything okay, out, right? All right sure. The, the part that breaks my heart, Miller, to, talking about like Lifeline for these developers, yeah. is thinking about Sky, which we talked about a lot yeah. on this podcast. But thinking about that team, Genova Chen, developing that game for seven years, and at a certain point realizing, oh crap, we're screwed. We need to make this a free-to-play game with microtransactions in it. Rebooted it, and then developed it and launched it, and then. What two months later, Apple's like, "Hey, here's a way to I have would, premier <laughs> games." Like, oh my be, god, what terrible timing! I, I would be very surprised if there weren't conversations that happened there. I mean, I I know for, literally from conversations with Genova Chen that part of what he felt was important about that game was having a free to play version that felt relatively complete without microtransactions because the whole game was about charity and community and stuff and mm-hmm. so and that's a man who who cares a lot about the ideas behind his games uh so it might have been that apple approached him about being involved with this and he was like well yeah but we have this other plan and not to mention that sky is going to be i mean they've said it's coming with a sort of different version yeah to consoles like ps4 um, they said it was. Point. They said it was leaving mobile this year yeah so i mean so. that we're presumably we'll have news on that sometime pretty soon um but I, I, you're, you're, you're right to. Uh, I've thought about that same thing with that game because it feels like that, that was a project that would have felt at home here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's, it's not part of it. But um, I did see. I don't know my number. My I saw, I saw something from them the other day, like a release that said that they had had like five million users yeah. or something like that. They, I think it's it doing well. well. Yeah, no, I mean, really. just to, to point out that it, that it, that it. I, I'm not sure that this necessarily meant that things went poorly for it. By the way, is everyone committed to sticking with it? To keep subscribing? I feel yeah. like I'm good after a month. Today, it, it's interesting today because uh, uh, as of this recording on Wednesday, Mario Kart just released oh, on, yeah. on iOS and my head just went from Apple Arcade boop, over to Mario Kart of like, oh, I got to check that out. Right. That's like the big juggernaut that I was kind of hoping 
arcade would have. You know, that game I'm talking about, the, the Stranger Things thing, you know, like, that stood out, but it's not there. Rayman Mini. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not basically there. basically Mario. Mm, no. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm definitely going to keep playing this stuff. I mean, uh, I have not engaged with mobile for a long time for all the reasons I was describing earlier. Yeah. And uh, I've been much happier uh, in the last week being able to just go in and know that there are some games that I can try out when I'm like, hey, you know, if I download this and then I've got it when I'm, um, you know, waiting at the deli for my sandwich or I'm, you know, um, sitting in the passenger seat of the car or whatever, like those sorts of, of uh, situations... Um, to know that I have a game that I can have some confidence is just going to be like a quality, complete experience mm -hmm. without trying to nickel and dime me and without, you know, trying to like spread out what's fun about it across some weird microtransaction model. That is very appealing to me. So I, I'm willing to like to, to stay on board for a while and see how they grow it. Andy's earlier point, though, is very important, which is they, they need to actively be talking about like, what is this moving forward? How many games we're going to have per month? Who are the new partnerships we're working with? Um, and and get some of that forward momentum um, that the, the the TV services that they're com they're not competing against, but that they're kind of trying to model after, like Netflix, realized a long time ago, right? Like Netflix knows that like Stranger Things season three is coming. We're going to start talking about it five months ahead of time, mm -hmm. right? Um, they, I think they're going to need to very actively move towards that somehow. Yeah, I think some of the hyperbole you see now, though, is a little bit of that surprise of, I don't think people having a big idea or a good idea of what was actually going to be in this and yeah. then having the launch of like, hey, here's a ton of new IP, go explore. I think people are yeah. shocked by that. So I think it's worked out okay for them so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm but. already like, if you go to the, the games on the store and go to all games, they have a re organized by release. So it's like a game a day so far, at least over the last couple of days. But... Um, yeah, I, I didn't know that was happening. Like yeah. they need to, they need to communicate that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely going to keep, I mean, I, I, I definitely find that my gaming, um, like life is that I, 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 I kind of think of it as like, a, as, I mean, different, different postures. I know that sounds kind of weird, but like when I want to play PC games, I want to sit down and play PC games. And like when I want to play console games, I like want to sit on the couch and play console uh -huh. games. And I, I think mobile for me for a long time was not like, to, to Miller's point of a, a bit of a like, uh, I'm stuck in this line or I'm waiting, you know, for the pizza or something like that as a play point. But I've definitely changed and I've added mobile into like, there's times when there's just, I just want to like go sit in a quiet room, sit, be, be somewhere different and play a game. Cause yeah. I mean, I want to play games all the time, by the way. I mean, that to be clear, I always want <laughs> to be playing games. Clear. Uh, but like, uh, you know, I, that, that's just, there's times when like sitting back and playing a game on my phone is just a really nice, relaxing thing and having, a selection of games available. I mean, there's been plenty of times too where I've been on a flight where I've been like, oh God, all these old games don't work or like, you know, games that I had, fun. Yeah. you know what I mean? Or like, the, oh, the advertising thing that was in here that let you kind of skip through stuff is broken and like all those other things that happened to some of my old mobile games to have a current um, catalog of games that I can choose from and even like download quickly four or five before I get on, you know, some mode of transportation yeah. uh, is Good to me and worth five dollars. I mean, that's I think it's worth five dollars. I hope it's worth my thing is I hope it's worth five dollars for developers and I hope they keep pushing it and bringing in new content and like you said, communicating yeah. in a better way. Are they all playable offline? I guess I I think that was one of the allures of it. Is that, that right? I mean, download them or something. I know there's multiplayer sections in there for some like Red Rain or whatever. Yeah, I mean, there's a, that would that would be my one thing. I haven't yeah. checked. I haven't downloaded them all yet, and so I know there are some fighters and some other things that are explicitly multiplayer. Yeah, yeah. So I presume you couldn't really play. Right. I mean, there's gonna be ones that you can't. I mean, just like on and there's times when I don't have internet connection on my sure. console yeah, that I right, can't play sure. some games. Uh, that that's not my my point. I think right. there. I do think there is a like. I assume, by the way, I haven't done any research on it, but I assume there's like a, a, a fl like a flash license kind of thing. Like I think the Switch does that too with the Nintendo um, SNES games that you can like, if you've connected to the internet recently, it's yeah, like, yeah. okay, for the next 24 hours, yep. you can use these. And so that it has a like refresh check and then right, it comes right. back. And if you don't check it within 24 hours, it's like, you need an internet connection, right? right so right. I don't think it's required, but at points it, like it, will, it will need to refresh that. I mean, user agreement. Yeah. I, I just put on put myself on airplane mode, and then hopped into a game. It seems okay. There with we it. go. Yeah. Uh, so. Do you guys have favorite games we haven't mentioned yet? 
Um, Let me get my phone. Oh, uh, what is it called? I a had a fine time with Choo Choo Universe or whatever. I was expecting that to Choo be a Choo Rocket Universe. Yeah. yeah. That's that a throwback to Dreamcast. Uh, yeah. Skate City. Oh, do you like Skate City? I've been enjoying it. Okay. Like, it's, I think it's a little mellow. I mean, it's not like, it's, I mean, it's not Tony Hawk in my mind, but yeah. uh, once again, I'm looking for an experience that I think is kind of fun and chill on my phone when I want to be in that like kind of phone mode. Yeah. Um, Remember Florence? Yeah. Uh, Assemble with Care is kind of like that. Oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. It's yeah, that was a nice the vibe I got little, as well, yeah. Short little game, but it's cool. Huh. I like um, uh, Oceanhorn 2 is pretty expansive and it's cool. It's the Zelda it's one? It's like the Zelda, like the original Oceanhorn I remember playing on iOS and thinking like, oh, that's cool that they're basically making a Zelda game. With I think Uematsu doing the music for that um, first one at least. Uh, yeah, I guess I, I don't remember that, but um, Ocean Horn, Horn 2, I started it and it's like, yeah, this is pretty... Like yeah. solidly put together so far. Um, I was pretty disappointed by the best name in the batch, uh, Various Daylife. I don't know if you guys oh, checked gosh. out Various Daylife. I mean, that's the that's the Square Enix one. This is that, the Bravely Default team that yeah. feels like it was a, a failed DS prototype. Yes, like it literally has it's like two screen. The things. UI is a. Abysmal it's not, and so the text is so small. And then also every time I would minimize it and go back to it, it would restart and not save where I was. I'm like, all right, um, goodbye, day life. I played I played some tint, which I thought was kind of neat, which is sort of a little puzzle game where you're drawing watercolor on these these pages and you're crossing the lines to merge the colors. So like you need to get a that you have a, a a yellow line that needs to cross through some green paint to get to the uh, you know, and then mix together to become a new color, and that's okay. how you solve the puzzles. All right, it's pretty cute. Sounds cute. Um, uh, sneaky Sasquatch. Yeah, that one's fine. <laughs> Basically, like a Splinter too. Cell everybody wanted. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, there's a lot to wade through. There is. There's there's a there's racing a game on here that's kind of neat. It's Sonic. Uh, Agent Intercept. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Was it cool? It is, but there's only like it's like quests every like or a new mission every eight hours. It's mm. like a timer based. So I went through the tutorial and then did one mission and then I was like come back later yeah <laughs> play it again or oh, come back weird. later so I was kind of bummed by that but the art style is very cool very uh no one lives forever oh interesting yeah. weird uh Apple Arcade everybody check it out or don't it's an interesting I think it's saga for 2019 games that first three months you might as well check it out just know where you cancel subscriptions right set a reminder in your phone yep. cancel on this day <laughs> just in case you're if not you don't like anymore. it yeah. yeah uh Andy next week a uh, new cover story is revealed Ooh. Yes, that's coming yeah. up. How are yeah. you feeling about it? I mean, I, I think, I think, I think we, I mean, I, you know, it's like anytime you you always kind of like wonder how excited everyone will be. I think people will be pretty excited for this one. I, yes. I think, I, I think, I think there will be a lot of excitement. I think that uh, um, we've managed to get some, some great stories, I think, in, in place. And I think we have planned for the next couple months. I think we have some, some great stories coming down, Interesting. The, down, down the pipe. So uh, I'm excited uh, about that. I think we have some. Definitely, I mean, I, I, I think we have some things that people will definitely remember. Let's put it that way. Oh, the next interesting. Couple of yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's nice to hear. Uh, even if the next issue, more development focus, I'd say for like the feature and the there cover. Story. It's almost like you went on this this, this I, trip. I might have been there on both trips. Uh, yeah. It's weird. I, okay, all right. There are sure. some awesome would, stories in here with developers. Yes, and, yes. And I would echo that. Like, there's going to be some people who are going to kind of lose their mind about this next one, I think. Really? You, well, I think just you like guys are hyping up a little you bit. Got, you, you I mean, it's exciting, but what the project know. is. You know. yeah. It's not a reveal. It's well. I mean, well, why why are you trying to ruin everybody's <laughs> just, day? Because everyone's gonna be like, it's Splinter Cell or something crazy yeah, uh, like well, that. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's it's not it's not a reveal. But it's, I think it's a good story, right? Yes. You know yeah. what I mean? And I I, I think um, the. You know, we don't get as many reveals as we once did, right? You know what I mean? It's, but I think we try to go out and get great and interesting stories about these games, and I think we completed that task. Yeah, there we go. Check you know, it out. So. Tuesday at Gameformer.com. We'll uh, reveal both those things. Uh, and that's it for this overall episode of the Gameformer Show podcast. Be sure to tune in next Thursday. We'll have a new episode waiting for you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.